to get to the weather, boys. The countdown to the solar eclipse is on with millions of people expected to get out and view this solar spectacular. Portions of 15 states, including Texas, Arkansas, Illinois, New York, and Maine will fall under the path of totality, but we'll still be able to see it here if the clouds don't get in the way. Plus, our Fox 2's Eclipse Chasers, aka the Weather Boys, Derek Kevra and Alan Longstreet, are in the path of totality in Toledo right now, where they'll be able to catch all of the action. And here they are live. Hey, guys. Oh. Bree, hello. Look at this. Hello. Eclipse. Eclipse. 2024, you see, you see that? Eclipse 2024? Yes. The Weather Boys are here. We are in Toledo where the path of totality is going through. So the prop, so the view that people are gonna get in Michigan is not quite a hundred percent. No. And a hundred percent is totality. Those words are they're the same, they're synonyms. And this is a scenario in which one percent makes all of the difference. Yes, it does. So here's what we wanted to do. We wanted to get here in the path of totality. For us, and so to the imagination station, we went. We left early this morning, 9 30. This oh no, nine o'clock, no, 8 50. 8 50. Who knows? Well, we were worried about who traffic. Knows? We, we were, were very worried. worried. Uh, took us an extra what 15 minutes, yeah. So, not so bad. this morning, traffic was not rough. Right now, we hear things are pretty bad. If you, yeah, if you're saying, oh, it's only 1 uh, 35, I'll just get in my car and drive down to Toledo. No, you won't. No, you will not. No, you will not. I heard an, uh, uh, two and a half hours to yeah. get here from, from the Metro Detroit, yeah. Which it's yeah. usually an hour 15. Yeah, big difference, huge difference, but there's, I mean, the, everybody is here people. already. Look at this. Um, literally, bus loads getting dropped off. It's fantastic. And of course, the big question has always been, uh, we've been very worried about this for weeks now. Yes, we have. The skies. And yeah. the weather has been absolutely fantastic. We're starting to see a little deck of clouds coming in, but you put the glasses on, you can still see the sun. Who, who, who would have thought that Friday, when it was snowing at opening day, Comerica Park, that just three days later, it's gonna be 72, 75 degrees here in Toledo. Yeah. The sun has been out all morning with these clouds rolling in. There is a little layer, there's a little tiny bit of people going, I, you know, that's not gonna mess it up, is it? We still think we're gonna get a pretty darn good view of this total solar eclipse, even with a cirrus deck of clouds. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna be just fine on that front. Um, and yeah, the path of totality is where you wanna be. That's where we are. Yeah. Uh, we got the whole gang from the Imagination Station here. Carl, the chief scientist, is fantastic. Um, they've got everybody. And they've got everybody. The entire staff. Yeah, they're all out. Um, so we're waiting. Yeah. I'll tell you what, the anticipation is growing. I haven't even. We haven't even hit up the food trucks yet. No, they got the food trucks here. Uh, they've got crafts and stuff for kids. Like they're making uh, pinhole projectors. They're making rockets. They're doing bubble experiments. Did they do any sort of competitions with the rockets? They no, no. They, they didn't, didn't do any like me no. versus you who won. <laughs> I yeah, won. we did. I a, we did a contest, Fantastic. a competition. Yeah. Alan's rocket flew better than my rocket, but that's not important on a day like today. Yeah, actually, not. This is a unifying the event. <laughs> the important thing, Bree, on a day like today yeah. is uh, camaraderie, excitement, and then a unified excellence for science. Yeah, honestly, I'm so excited because you hear people who've seen a total solar eclipse in person. You hear them talk about it, and it is it is a religious experience to them. I, I mean, can't. spiritual. It is something, and. Uh, we haven't seen it yet. It, it is beginning soon, Bree. Soon here yeah, it's at Toledo. coming. And it uh, like yeah, guys, we're excited. It sounds like you guys are having a blast. Party in the USA is a blast in the background. People are excited in the background. Yeah, Miley's here. Miley might be here. Yeah. Miley's there. Yeah. <laughs> There's, oh, okay. Huh? You guys can't see him, but I can see you. Uh, hello. <laughs> well, like yeah. So yeah. So anyway, Bree. Yeah, things are things are beginning to uh, to build to that boiling point, which is very nice. And uh, we'll be uh, checking in with you again, maybe a little bit later. But at two o'clock, uh, the powers that be have given this guy and me yeah. two, almost two straight hours to live stream this event, culminating at three thirteen. We've got look, we've got about fifteen to twenty minutes until first contact, everybody. First contact. About first contact. Minutes. First contact is coming, Bree. We're here. Get excited. Wow. Twenty minutes and it's your. All right, Bree, back to you. All right, we're all counting down. We're so excited. Everyone's excited in the background with the weather boys there. We're all counting down the minutes. At this point, you can see right there on the side of your screen, we're just about 90 minutes away from the experience at 3.15. If you wanna watch it, it's not as easy as, as looking up in the sky. Your eyes can be injured by staring directly at the sun, even when it's covered by the eclipse. One DMC eye doctor has done extensive research on eye injuries directly from the eclipse because he sees 
so many of them. He says it's like having a laser burned into your retinas and that's permanent eye damage. When you're looking at the light um, of the sun, your eye focuses all that energy onto your retina. Your eye basically concentrates that energy. So when you stare at the sun for more than, you know, even a few seconds, you end up focusing that energy so harshly on your retina that you essentially make a thermal burn. Dr. Lin says the thermal burn doesn't hurt, but it will send you to the eye doctor wondering why you have blurry vision or blind spots. Remember, regular sunglasses won't cut it. You'll need those special eclipse glasses for protection. But if you don't have any gear, you can make your own projector. You know, Rich Luderman actually just showed us how to make it with two paper plates. But if you don't want to do that, here's another tutorial. You're going to take your box and put it on the white paper, and you're going to trace out a little square that fits the bottom. You can just simply tape the white square into the bottom of the box. You'll close the box and you'll just cut out sort of two openings, one on the bottom here and one on the other side here. Over one opening, poke one small hole through, just like that. Okay, so this version is a little bit more extensive, a little bit more fancy, but you use this with your back for facing the sun, aiming the pinhole into the sky. When the moon passes in front of the sun, you'll see a dark circle across that pinhole. All right, listen to this. A bipartisan approach on how consumer data is handled can improve privacy protections. Lawmakers are proposing new rules for companies that harvest and use personal information. Consumers would have to be notified about details on collection and retention and would have control over issues such as opting out of being sent advertisement that use their personal information. A new data privacy bureau at the Federal Trade Commission would be established to enact those rules and information buyers would have to uh, register with the FTC. The gaming giant behind Fortnite investing heavily in the so-called metaverse, Fox's Amon Dignum has more on what it means for gamers and other consumers. Epic Games is one of the biggest developers in the gaming world. And now they're doubling down on creating new worlds inside that? their most popular titles. The company earlier this year announcing they're bringing the world of Lego to their yeah. Unreal editor for Fortnite, well, giving yes. players a break yeah, I mean, from the traditional last man standing battle royale mode that made the game stocks. famous. To instead build games inside of the game, similar to competitor Roblox. Michael Herriger is CEO and co-founder of Atlas Creative. Yeah. They help build commercially themed worlds in Fortnite uh, and Roblox. He says this is just the beginning. I think it's going to attract a brand new audience that isn't necessarily yeah, looking for combat that. game modes. Uh, and moves like this could help serve as a model for other brands to get card. involved in the metaverse. I honestly, honestly could see this becoming that. the like industry yeah. standard. If you want to build a Spider-Man game mode, we want to empower you to do that. Ultimately, the possibilities presented by the metaverse could lead to the creation Are of we doing new another hit with Weather Boys? games and even experiences seen in movies uh, like Ready sure. Player One. You go in right and after this you break, so support and you buy something like a hat from Atlas in a, a game and then we Four ship minutes. it to your house as well. Um, I think that's Probably one of the things I'm most excited about. The next step, bringing small businesses to the metaverse when it becomes economically viable to do so, meaning mom and pop shops could eventually make sales in the gaming space. Check out this story and more every weekend in the Fox on Tech, Fox on Games podcast. In New York, Eamon Dignam, Fox News. All right, the Weather Boys are having such a great time. We're going to check in with them in just a second after the break. Fox 2's Derek Kever and Alan Longstreet will join us again live from Toledo right after the break.
Welcome back to Live Now in Detroit. I'm your host, Bree Teamer. Millions of people are headed outside to catch a glimpse of this rare event, including our weather boys, Fox 2's Derek Kever and Alan Longstreet are in Toledo, Ohio. We're going to chat with Derek right now, where he is live outside. Hey, Derek. Bree, Bree, how you doing? We're having a great time here in Toledo. Alan's out and about getting stuff ready for our live show that's gonna start in about 10 minutes, where we're gonna take you up to and through totality. So everything begins, first contact they call it, when the moon first starts going over the sun here in just a few minutes. And then it's gonna take a period of time, almost an hour, for that to, uh, to to become totality. And in Toledo, that'll happen close to 315. Uh, everybody's gonna be out, so our show, we're gonna take you through that and then beyond that and find out people's reactions. But there's some really cool things here in Toledo, like these gigantic solar glasses. And I first saw them and I thought that they were uh, just for show, but it turns out these are actually solar lenses. Like if you for some reason didn't, ha and they're pointed right at where the solar eclipse is taking place later today. Is that cool, right? In there? You're like, That's it, awesome. What does it look like when you look through that? It looks big. It looks big, right? Yep. Can, can you see anything? Is it too dark? It's too dark. Yeah, but you can see the sun. Yep. And that's the important part. All right, awesome stuff. Uh, Matt, come with me real quick. Come with me real quick. I just want to show you the countdown because this is also cool. They have been planning for this moment at the Imagination Station for about one year. They announced one year ago today that they were going to host this big party. And there it is right there, that countdown that's been on display for a long time here at the Imagination Station. One hour, 23 minutes, and 17 seconds until totality right here. How cool is that? How cool is that? So we're getting really excited, guys. We're getting really excited, and, we, uh, and we've and we got a lot more to show you. we got a lot more, not only things to show you, but people to introduce you to, including somebody who came here from extremely far away. You will meet them at the live stream at around 2 o'clock, maybe a little bit after that. But you'll meet them a little bit later today. Bree, back over to you. Derek, it looks like you're having so much fun. All the kiddos in the background want to get their 15 seconds of fame. <laughs> it's looking great. Yeah, they're great. They're great. And we're going to go. So, Bree, I'm going to let you go because i got to get back over to my area where uh, where we can get ready for the uh, for the streaming show starting at 2 o'clock. Don't, don't turn off this stream, guys, because there's so much great stuff we're going to show you later today. Keep it going. There's oh, hey, hey, there he is. I had to get my pre eclipse snacks. Yes, he was hungry, this guy. you got to keep him fed or he gets cranky. Are you keeping the crowd in line? Yeah, You've gathered right. quite a bit. Are you guys excited for the eclipse? Yeah! yeah. Look at that. It's like a rock show out here. <laughs> All right, Bree, see ya. All right, thanks, guys. All right, as Derek said, you can stay with us online at fox2detroit.com or Fox Local, wherever you're watching right now. Just stick with us. The special coverage starts at 2 p.m. All right, switching gears here. Most people would cuddle kittens for free, but this company is willing to pay the big bucks for your snuggles. We'll tell you which one and how you can take advantage coming up. We'll be right back.
welcome back to Live Now Detroit. I'm your host, Bree Teamer. We've been talking about it all hour, and now we're just about 90 minutes, a little under 90 minutes away from our world as we know it becoming dark and the solar eclipse taking over for a few minutes, about five minutes. Uh, just about all of us will be able to see at least part of it firsthand. It just depends on where you are and what the weather looks like today. We see, well, we just heard from our uh, three of our weather uh, meteorologists that it's pretty clear today in our area. So with telescopes already pointing towards the sky, both amateur and professional astronomers in Mexico will be the first on the continent to see the big show. And from there, the path of the total eclipse will travel northeast, where about 32 million people live and millions of others have made the trek. If the weather cooperates, what they're going to see in those final five minutes before totality is the street lights come up. Venus starting to make an appearance, then Jupiter. Then we'll see the diamond ring effect where that last speck of moon or sunlight is coming through the moon's valleys. And then we're thrust into twilight. For a while, meteorologists thought it might be too cloudy to see the eclipse, but looks like the skies are clearing and we're in good luck. Here's a look at the peak times of the total solar eclipse and arbors at 3.13 p.m. Detroit and Flint, both at 3.14, Kalamazoo at 3.10, and Lansing is at 3.13. Again, we'll be live with the Weather Boys. They'll have a, a full special report on that. And then in New York, in New York City, residents have a little fun following Friday's magnitude 4.9 earthquake T-shirts um, saying, I survived the NYC earthquake flying off store shelves. Carrie Cooley, the owner of Big Frog Customs T-shirts, said the shirts were made just 10 to 15 minutes after the quake shook the Big Apple. Someone posted the shirt on social media, and you know how that goes. Soon enough, millions of people have their eyes on it. The tremor briefly shook the city's skyscrapers, but didn't cause any major damage. All right, a pet food company will make someone grin like a chaser cat, chaser cat, by paying cash for showing some cool cat love. The Akana Pet Food Company wants to pay the winner of a questionnaire contest ten thousand dollars. The winner will visit a best friends um, animal society pet adoption center in the cuddle and cuddle kittens for about four hours to help promote care for kittens in need. Go to akana.com and scroll down to Kitten Cuddler. Wanted to enter. All right. Shake Shack, they're giving out free chicken sandwiches every Sunday this month while also throwing a little bit of shade over at Chick-fil-A. Now to get this free sandwich, your order must be at least $10. Just use the promo code Chicken Sunday. I wonder if this is available on DoorDash, um, but it's also, you can take advantage of this deal in store. And then also online, although Shake Shack didn't call out Chick-fil-A by name, the burger joint said in a statement, quote, here at Shake Shack, we pride ourselves on our chicken shack, uh, which is available seven days a week. And quote, Chick-fil-A is closed on Sundays. All right. I hope you found something that you can share today. If you did, use let us know using hashtag Live Now Detroit on Instagram and X. You can watch us Monday through Friday at 1 p.m. and 4 p.m. on our website. And uh, Derek and Alan are up next with the Solar Eclipse special. Should we do it? All right.
that's when they don't work so well either, you know. <laughs> now who knows it's been a party it is a party the party continues um, and it has begun yeah. First contact has well, been observed. First contact has been observed. It is starting, uh, if you're looking where we are, it's like right, if you if you look at the sun at like four o'clock, you start yep. to see a little like chipping away. That's where the moon is starting to, to blacken the sun. But a lot of questions leading up to today, you know, what the weather is gonna be like, sure. what's the traffic gonna be like, all kinds of stuff. We, we can report, we left this morning uh, from the Detroit area at 8.50. And it took us a ride that usually takes two hours and 15 minutes. Took us about two hours and 20 minutes. Right? What? Yeah, one hour. Oh, I'm sorry. One I'm hour. sorry. Oh, gosh. Where uh, are you going? No, no, no. Where did yeah, you come bad, from? My bad. My bad. Look at this. Yeah. Sorry. I, okay. I'm, well, I trust I got, us on everything else. Yeah, I got excited. for that. Yeah. So, thank you. No, but where the where the, the <laughs> loose tie was was because the traffic now, now is two, two and a half hours, hours and 20 minutes. Yeah. So, it took us one hour and 20 minutes. Now it's taking people an extra hour. So the traffic is getting worse. So if you're thinking, oh, it's two o'clock, I can get down there by 3.15. The answer is no, you no, you cannot. No, I appreciate your ambition, but yes. no. But the path of totality is where you really want to be on events like this. And everybody, everybody says that. All of the, we've been doing a ton of research leading up to this. Yes. Podcasts, books, Big brains. articles. Oh yeah. Uh, and everybody says, if you're not in the path of totality, you're not going to see the eclipse like it is meant, like a total eclipse is meant to be seen. Right. Not a 99 percenter. No, no, no. That one percent is, is is a massive difference. Um, but then it's hard to to convey that to somebody who hasn't experienced it. And I'll tell you what, at the Imagination Station, they're doing a darn good job of it. Doing a great job. And uh, we thought about, okay, Toledo. We got to get down to Toledo. Well, we might as well go to the Imagination Station. Well, we might as well talk to our good friend, Chief Scientist Carl here. Carl, how Carl, you doing, Carl? Carl from good. the Imagination good. Station. We we see Carl every year for Weather Day at Comerica Park. So it's nice to see you outside of that on your home turf. Home turf. Thank you for having us, Carl. No, thanks for coming down. It's uh, We've had a great turnout. There's tons of people here. we got food trucks. we got activities. We saw you guys launching rockets earlier today. Um, we got telescopes tracking the sun. It's it's a science party. Yeah, it is a science, and there is so much science in there. I don't know where to go. No, we start with the broad still. How does this feel? You've been planning for this for a year plus to see all of the you know culmination of your efforts, You know the humans down here. What's it like? Yeah, I think we've been planning this for like seven years, all, going all the way back to 2017 when we had a partial eclipse and we did this same sort of thing. But yeah, for the past year, we've been partnering with all sorts of people in the community, our metro parks, the libraries, just all sorts of organizations throughout the, the whole city um, to get people excited, to get them knowledgeable about this, uh, how to view the eclipse safely using the solar eclipse glasses or even indirect viewers. So. Yeah, yeah and, and now is the time, because there is some confusing timelines when it comes to these glasses for some people. 
But when you, if you want to start looking at it now, which you should, now you do need to wear the eclipse glasses. Absolutely. So right now we've just begun. We're probably like seven, eight minutes into the moon blocking the sun. And this is where you want to use the solar glasses to protect your eyes. But during totality, when the moon completely covers the sun, that's where you've got to take the glasses off so you can see the corona. That's the only time you can see the corona of the sun. Its outer atmosphere is with a uh, to uh, total eclipse. And then, you know, that'll last for about, for here, about a minute, 54 seconds, and then the sun will peek back out again. Time for the glasses to go back on. Right. So here's a question for you, Carl, because the weather has been perfect today. Huh? Now we have these high, thin clouds coming in, which they don't block the sun totally, right. but they, they do soften it. Will we still see the corona? Do we know that? Is this a, we'll just, we'll have to see how thick they are when the time comes? I like to be optimistic and think that at any time these clouds could part. Sure. There could be a clear spot that comes in. Um, last October, when I went out to see the annular eclipse on the west coast, same exact thing happened. We had clouds and everybody was kind of a downer, but then at the last moment, the crowd like just erupted and it was such an emotional moment. It was like, oh my. <laughs> and everybody's just like looking at this thing. Um, it was just amazing. So I'm, I'm holding that hope no matter what the clouds are like, we're gonna see something. We won't, if it's cloudy like this, we may not see the corona, but we're gonna see it darken. Temperature's probably gonna drop. We may see birds out flying around, bats flying, mm. crickets chirping. Um, so we could still see some interesting stuff. Are, are you, have you seen a full, a total solar eclipse before? I have not seen a total solar eclipse. So I'm holding out that this is gonna be my first. Yeah, well, no, it will be. It's we gonna are, be, we are, it's we gonna are, be we awesome. Are. I'm so interested to see what the emotional experience will be for everybody because to see it on an individual level is one thing and I think that would be awe-inspiring. But then when you have all of these individuals together you know, and that group effervescence that you spoke of at the, the last one, um, it's going to be something. Yeah, I, I think Derek's like, going to cry. I feel, well, I feel like the crowd, I mean, anytime you go to like a live sporting event and you see something amazing happen, it's, it's the fact that you're with a bunch of other people that are yeah. also emotional or invested at least in that experience. And everybody here, and you were saying that you guys were expecting 5,000 people, so as many as 5,000 people witnessing the same event, wanting the same thing to happen at the same time. If it does happen in that in that way, I can see it being an emotional experience. And, and these these Aurora chasers, these Corona chasers, these, the Umbra these, files, the Umbra files that uh -huh. they run out, they chase the eclipses. I mean, they say that when you get everything lining up, especially in a situation where you, maybe you think it's not, and I'm not saying we're there, but I'm just saying, that's when it really becomes almost religious. I mean, people talk about it in those terms, which is insane. Yeah, I've seen people interview uh, people before an eclipse saying, what do you think it's gonna be? And like, eh, it's gonna get dark. And then afterwards they're like, oh my God, oh, oh, oh. Well, they, they can't even speak, uh, right? Because it is a truly emotional yeah. experience. It is, you know, we say awesome a lot. It is awesome. It, it is awe-inspiring. In the sense so. of awe. Yes, so, yes. Right. Um, all right, so Carl, what do you think afterwards? So everything culminates at about 312, is it 312 or 313? Starts at three. Starts at three twelve. It goes for about two minutes, right? But then we go back into the partial phase, and there are still some really interesting things that happen, like ninety seconds before totality, up to ninety seconds after totality. Um, high atmosphere uh, turbulence combined with the sun appearing like basically a banana, a, a crescent, can create what are called uh, shadow bands on the ground. We could see things that may look like snakes slithering across the ground. Uh, white concrete will work best. Um, so I'm going to be looking for those to see if we see that. Um, definitely the temperature drop and if there are any animals behaving unusually. Yeah. So there's uh, there's definitely things to see even afterwards, even after the, the culminating moment, which is really neat. Um, and then the entire thing wrapping up around 4.30ish, a few minutes before 4.30. What is your what is your one shiny moment, sir? What are you most excited about? And you can't say totality. If you say totality, say one thing within totality or around it. Right. I'm excited that we've gotten all these people out here <laughs> to learn about science, right? And it's a community event. These are people that, you know, they're, they're coming here to see the eclipse. It's, an, it's a science thing. When's the, like, the last time that happened, right? I see people go to sporting events, going to movies, going to concerts, but dude, this is science and we're getting people excited about a scientific event. And, and, and it's a once in a lifetime event for nearly all of these people. And not only people, but kids. I've, I've seen so many kids here, and every single kid, they were like, hey, you excited? I mean, they are, they are jazzed up, they're ready to go. And this is, this is how to teach science, by doing, right? By right. getting them out there, you know, memorizing facts, that's cool, necessary, but this is what will grab them. When you experience something like this, uh, this is something that could turn somebody into a path to be an astronomer, to be a scientist, to be a, a medical technician. It doesn't really matter. As long as they get excited about learning and science, I think we've done our job.
And we, we've heard those stories through all of those podcasts and articles and books where it, it does, it's a moment like this. It's some eclipse 1979 that they saw down in Denver or something, and, and it just changed their life forever, and it, it set them out on a path. And that, yeah, that could that could happen today. For sure. Kelly Clarkson saying about it, a moment like this, American Idol, season one. <laughs> That's right. That's exactly what that was about. So here we are today, and At I'm excited. At the moment, like this. Um, and we have so many different interviews with so many different folks coming up, too. We have... Uh, we spoke with some some umbrophiles, some eclipse chaper, chasers. Yeah. Uh, we have an astronomer at Central Michigan University uh, who offer their own unique perspective because it is uh, it's it's a, a depth of knowledge that we get to tap into. And Carl, my final question to you: Set it into context for people who say, "Yeah, but these solar eclipses happen all the time." I mean, for set for 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 this area, for this state, for these cities, you said some dates earlier today that really highlight the fact that this is a rare thing. Right. I mean, solar eclipses happen every year, but happening at a particular location is what's rare. For Toledo, 1806 was the last time we saw a total solar eclipse. The next time will be 2099. For people in Detroit, you've got to wait till 2444 there you go. before a total Alan eclipse Alan will be passes. long dead. Are you kidding? No, I will live forever. And I will, yeah. <laughs> I will um, live forever. <laughs> well, uh, Carl, did you sleep last night? Actually, no, I could not sleep. I stayed at the hotel. I was awake at 3 o'clock trying to sleep. I just kept tossing a turn. I'm just too excited uh, yeah. for this for this event. Great. Fantastic. There it is. Well, you guys ah. have done a great job already. Nice job, Carl. Thank you. Uh, we're going to let you go get back to it. We know you got a lot of stuff going on. Oh, real quick. Yeah. Will you be announcing? Will you be walking us through totality? Yes, we will. As we get a bit closer, we're going to start talking about things in a little more more detail. Okay, great. Um, and there's music playing right now, but my assumption is that as we get towards the moment, it will be a quiet, serene... Dark side of the moon, perhaps? Yeah. Well, actually, what we're going to do is we're going to do a sound bath. Um, just before totality, um, imagine like putting your finger on top of a, a wine glass, but on a larger scale, and just try to get everybody sort of zoned in to this like meditative state. And then during totality, we're going to just do quiet. Yes, I like that. Just quiet. And then afterwards, maybe, I don't know, maybe here comes the sun. Yeah, who knows? Yeah. Who knows? We'll have to wait and see. Can't wait. <laughs> the sky's the limit. All right, but tell everybody what we got coming up for this show, oh. though, because we've got still uh, an hour, one hour until totality now. Yes. And then, uh, we, but we've got a lot jammed into that hour, and then we've got some stuff on the backside of it, too. Oh, we sure do. Uh, Letitia Ferrer, she's, um, I know her from her podcast, Totality Talks. She's been to, I believe, 20 total solar eclipses. So she's dedicated a large chunk of her life seeking this out. So she has that a unique lot of money, experience. she says, too. And, and I, I, remember, I remember 2017, I saw people cry about the eclipse, and I thought, you're... This That's is crazy. Sir. But to hear her speak about it yeah. really, really shows you a little something. Um, and then um, a couple of other professors, a couple other meteorologists in the field who are going to yeah. give us unique perspectives. And of course, our very own Dina Santafanti. She's going to take us through some uh, tips that you need to know, uh, some safety tips when yes. it comes to your eyes and the glasses, uh, which does include a slight demonstration, but a remarkable demonstration. Remarkable, yeah. Finesse. By us. Finesse. By us. Yeah. 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 So. Uh, all right, so we are going to take a, a quick little break. Yes. And then when we come back, we're going to talk safety, uh, and we're going to talk uh, more Eclipse. And cool. let me just say, I'm also oh. going to tell you why not to be afraid, because this is really, really grinding me. Oh, yeah. But that'll be it. That'll be after. Yeah, don't tell me now. I'm not going to yeah, tell yeah, you yeah, now. Make them sweat afraid for, for now. another three minutes. In another five minutes, I'll tell you why not to be scared. Yeah, you fear monger. Uh, there you go. All right, we'll take a quick break, uh, and we'll be back in just a couple of minutes. Don't go anywhere. Bye.
Welcome back everybody to our continuing coverage of the great American solar eclipse from the path of totality at the Imagination Station in Toledo, Ohio. We're gonna get into some things you need to know safety wise mm -hmm. so you don't get hurt. But before we do that, I have loved all week long my kid, well, I guess last week. Oh, you love, wait, wait, he loved his kids this week. I loved them all week This long. week, you loved them. Oh my gosh, for Dad most of the, year. of the week. Okay. But, but they come home from school with the, the homework, sure. the, like, the, like the solar eclipse projects. Oh, it's beautiful. Projects. Yes. So I'd like to read some facts. Please do, yeah. I verified some of these and they are correct. Absolutely. So the sun, the, it is a big star. Big star, true. That, that is correct. True. Big star, check. One million Earths can fit in it. That seems true. Is yeah. it true? I did not check it out, but I believe my, my That's weather boy. That's weather boy true. 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Yeah. Light can get to Earth in eight minutes. Cool. Gives us light, warmth, and energy. Nice. And is four billion, billion years old. That's beautiful. And How about that? You and know, that is a seven-year-old homework. That is first grade right there. Colored inside the lines, too. How about that? So, Job well so done. speaking of the sun, mm -hmm. it is big, it is large, it is in charge, and you have to be careful when you view it, when you view the solar eclipse, so you make sure you don't damage anything when it comes to your eyes or your retinas. Dina Santafanti explained earlier this week about, or last week, about how you can do it safely. You got this? I'm doing poorly. <laughs> uh, take it away, Dina. <laughs> In HealthWorks, so you ready for a little science for dummies? Uh, these guys are not the dummies, but maybe I am. When it comes to the eclipse, I want to get excited. I want to understand it, so that's what we're doing. This is the sun. Here we have the Earth to my right. Over here to my left. It looks tiny, what? but <laughs> size does not matter because this is significant. It's this is the moon. an important player. Okay, so let's go. Alan, explain to me, as the sun, I'll stand in the center of the universe, what's happening? The Earth rotates around the sun. We know that. The moon rotates around the Earth. Okay. Once every year or two, a total solar eclipse happens. Once every year or two, you think that's not a big deal. Okay, but it's still a monumental event. And the Earth, the moon's shadow on the Earth is so small that at any given location, it only happens once every 400 years. And this next one is gonna be very close to us, Dina. Here's the most important part. If you wanna go look at it and you don't have glasses, don't look up. Of course, it's going to look much better up in the heavens, but that is only if you are looking at the eclipse the right way. Okay, I put these on and I can't see anything. You can't see anything, it's almost pitch black. DMC ophthalmologist Dr. Shihui Lin is passionate about eye protection for good reason. He has published research on post-eclipse eye injuries because he sees so many of them. It's like having a laser burn into your retina. Wow. So that's permanent eye damage. It's permanent eye damage. And you see this happen after every eclipse. We see this after every eclipse. When you look at the sun, that light is making its way to the back of your eye. It's called the retina. When you're looking at the light um, of the sun, your eye focuses all that energy onto your retina. Your eye basically concentrates that energy. So when you stare at the sun for more than, you know, even a few seconds, you end up focusing that energy so harshly on your retina that you essentially make a thermal burn. Now you're not gonna blow air at me, are you? I'm not gonna blow air at you. <laughs> okay. Uh, the thermal burn doesn't hurt, but it will send you to the eye doctor wondering why you have suddenly blurry vision or a blind spot. Oftentimes after an eclipse, we see a lot of patients coming in from staring at the sun for too long with some sort of blurry spot or a missing part of their vision. Especially in this situation, it's sort of in the center part of your vision, so it's very noticeable. And even a sliver of sun can do damage. Special glasses are needed. Regular sunglasses are useless. Now. If you make it to the path of totality, yes, you can take a quick peek. If you're in the path of totality, there's a couple minutes when it's completely dark. Yes, during that period, you can take off your glasses. Okay. Um, and then immediately afterwards, you have to put your glasses back on. Remember, wherever you get your glasses from, make sure you open them up. You're looking for the ISO, and the number you want to remember is 12312-2. It's right here in bold print. One, two, three, one, two, dash two. That means they meet safety requirements and you won't do any eye damage. That's HealthWorks. I'm ready. <laughs> I'm Dina Santafanti. Good.
Well, so I'm glad. I'm glad she is yeah, ready. She's ready. She better be ready. You got the right number. ISO one two three one two dash two. We don't have to. We don't have to read them all. We got ISO one two three one two dash two. And do you do know the story? You know, hi fellas. Hi. Oh hey. <laughs> we got some excited eclipse yeah. are you uh, watchers me? back Look at this. there. The youth are excited for the eclipse. The all right, so. Quick, got it, got it. Quick, all right, so quick story about the glasses because I was worried about the uh, having the proper glasses this year. Sure. Because back in 2017, they were very hard to come by, these mm -hmm. glasses, very, very tricky. Yes. So I bought mine a year out, but then I learned what happened. So back in 2017, they did not have the ISO number yet. The ISO number- It was a wild, wild west. Yes, it was a wild, wild west. So the ISO number thing only came to be back in 2023. So back in 2017, there was this huge concern about, oh, there's fake glasses that sure. are gonna protect your right. eyes. Right. Turns out a lot of those fake glasses, they just weren't approved as the process was in 2017, but those same glasses would have been approved today. Okay. So that whole fear of like, I'm using the wrong glasses, I'm gonna go blind. Right. It actually wasn't as big of a deal no. as it was it was back then. No. Because there just wasn't a unified system to mark that. Right. The moral of the story is put the glasses on. If you can't see anything, then they're good. Yeah. That's if right. you can only see the sun through them, then you're good. Yeah. Um, and that's the thing, there's a lot of fear. I've had so many people ask me, like, um, what about our dog? What about my dogs? Yes. I need to be worried about my dogs, I need to be uh, worried about um, all kinds of stuff. Yeah. And uh, no, there's nothing different today about the sun than other days in terms of the strength. It's not as if you're going to walk outside and you're going to be blinded. Yeah. Don't stare at the sun yeah, or your eyes will be very, very pained. Yeah. Like I, I had teachers reach out to me yeah. and teachers were like, Hey, should I have my class do indoor recess tomorrow? Right. And I said, why? No. And they said, well, cause of the sun. And I said, the sun is no different today than it was yesterday. Right. The, the only difference is today you're going to want to look at it because something crazy is happening. Yes. So as long as you explain to your kids not to do that, then you're going to be fine. And you don't need to worry about looking at it uh, uh, like your pet's looking at it. They're going to be fine. You know, an interesting thing I did learn. Yes. You can look at it through the reflection of water and, and be safe. That was an yes. interesting thing I did not know yeah. until I started doing research for this. Sure. If it, yeah. Usually, if it hurts your eyes, stop looking. But the yeah. thing about today is it will, as it covers more. The brightness dims, so if it doesn't hurt, it's still not good. Yeah, it's still not safe. So, so yeah, confusing. Yeah, yeah people go, oh, well, there's only a half a percent of the sun. It's probably safe to look at. The answer yeah. is still no. It no, yes. it is not. So you'll be okay. We'll be okay. We're excited. Very excited. There's yeah. a lot happening in the sky today. There's a lot. Yes. Um, and so we, we're going to take you to uh, Mount Pleasant. Talk Mount to, Pleasant. Yes, we talked to a professor of astronomy with a background in physics. This is a very, very smart man. Yes. Before you throw to the story, yeah. a heads up to the crew back at the station. We have another camera guy out with a solar filter. Oh, yes. After the, after the break here, okay. we'd like to show his camera. So just a heads up to you guys. Yeah. So that way we can see what he's seeing. I That's we see it because it's getting some stuff. And also, we told your parents to watch. So they have their eyes on you. I want yeah, you all to know that. Close so on. careful. All right, careful take, take us to the okay. pack. Yeah, so uh, Mount Pleasant, um, a very, 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 uh, just, just watch this guy, okay? You know what I love about the eclipse? Um, the fact that, that uh, on the one hand, um, astronomers can predict these down to the second centuries in advance speaks to the, the genius of humanity. And on the other hand, this entire week, we're screaming from the rooftops, don't look at the sun. <laughs> it's like it's that's but it's humanity right there in a yeah, nutshell yeah it's it's that in a nutshell look at this amazing thing we can do and oh by the way don't blind yourself we don't ever look at the sun so we don't actually yeah. really understand how small it is because the brightness envelops you know most exactly. of the sky and so yeah, we avert you, our eyes this gives us a glimpse of something totally different yeah you have this tendency as a human being that if something's too bright you don't look at it like you know the sun's it's there like you, you can glance oh yeah there's the sun but that that's it that was that split second you're done but once you start to block it out, it's like, well, it's this little tiny thing. It's like smaller than your thumb, right? You just hold it out. It's not there. So that's the real danger and why we have to tell people, you know, don't don't stare at the sun. Because once it gets dim enough, you don't have that reaction anymore that it's that it's going to hurt your eye. And so you're like, oh, I can stare at that. It's not that bright. Well, I mean, it's not that bright, but it's also going to sunburn the back of your eye. And so if you're in the path of totality, uh, you know, a solar eclipse, a total solar eclipse, it's going to unfold slowly over a couple of hours. The most important bit is in the very center when you have a very brief period of time of totality itself, when the disk of the sun is completely blocked out by the moon. 
But as you get closer and closer to totality, everything gets very strange. And it's it's kind of hard to describe until you've experienced it yourself. Um, but we're used to, as human beings, we're conditioned to see what it's like when you lose the sun uh, essentially every day when the sun goes down, right? So in the evening, the sun gets lower and lower on the horizon. Uh, the amount of sunlight that you get gets uh, smaller and smaller. It gets dimmer and dimmer. But there are certain changes that are associated with that. Uh, shadows get longer and shadows eventually kind of disappear, you know, right at twilight as the sun is setting. You have almost no shadows whatsoever. Everything's a very nice, diffuse, even lighting. Uh, photographers love that time of day. You know, it's the golden, the golden hour, hour just yeah. as the sun is going down. Um, but during an eclipse, uh, the sun is usually pretty high in the sky. So like uh, this eclipse here in 2024, it's going to happen for us locally about three o'clock in the afternoon. The sun's going to be nice and high in the sky. So all the shadows will still be there. Everything will still have a distinct shadow. I'm assuming it's clear. Everything will have a distinct shadow. It's just that everything's getting dimmer. So the only way I can describe it is imagine that you're wearing a pair of magical sunglasses. And the sunglasses have a knob on the side that make it darker and darker and darker. And they can go all the way to block out all the light. And it's as if someone's standing right next to you and is slowly turning up that knob. And it's an odd feeling because mentally you're not conditioned for the light to ever do that. It's very strange. Um, and then as the sun gets closer and closer to actually being totality, other odd changes will start to happen in your environment. You will typically feel the temperature drop because you're literally just not getting as much sun. You know, it's kind of the difference on a nice sunny day of standing in full sunlight versus standing in the shade. Like you can feel a difference there when For you sure. do it. Yeah, And so it's kind of like that. The temperature drops a little bit. Um, animals will start to do some not necessarily weird things. It's not like spooky weird things. It's just animals that are more nocturnal or more uh, active during twilight will start to become active. Once it gets close enough to blocking out most of the sun, uh, in every direction you're looking, it looks like sunset. Because normally sunset happens when the sun is like on the horizon and you can kind of see the oranges and reds near the horizon where the sun's at. It's like that, but it's happening in all directions. Because what's happening is it's daytime out there in every direction sure. you're looking. And it's not daytime where you are because the sun's blocked out. Um, so that's really weird. And I was not ready for that uh, when it happened. Um, when the sun is almost perfectly covered, but just barely not, there's this like shimmering ring that will appear near the edge, like beads that will appear near the edge of this kind of diamond ring effect. And what you're seeing there is as if you have the disk of the sun and as the moon blocks it out, like the hills and valleys on the very edge of the moon are kind of letting some of the light through, but not quite all of it. And so sure. you get this kind of shimmering ring effect. Um, and then it covers it up completely. And uh, I've been an astronomer for uh, about 20 years now and a little over. <laughs> I try not to think about that. Uh, but I had never seen a total eclipse with my own eyes until 2017. I'd seen pictures. I'd read sure. descriptions. I'd seen it in textbooks. But it's nothing like when you actually see it. Um, in that moment, I was totally unprepared for what happened. Because in every textbook you see, if you look up a picture of a total eclipse, you see this round black thing and it's surrounded by this kind of shimmery white light that is yep. what, this thing called the solar corona. And the corona is kind of the outer atmosphere of the sun, if you want to think of it that way. The corona is there all the time. You just can't see it because the disk of the sun is too bright. It's all about contrast. If we block out that disk, you can now see that corona that's around there. And I always thought that the pictures that you see in textbooks were using like photographic techniques to bring out the corona, like they had a special camera or doing long exposures. No, none of that is true. You can literally just see it with your naked eye. And during totality itself, when the sun is completely covered, that is the only time it is safe to look at the sun with the naked eye. You will see that shimmering halo. And I can tell you from my own experience, no picture does it justice. Nothing does it justice. It looks like someone took like a cosmic ice cream scoop and scooped out a perfectly round black hole in the sky. It looks like there's a hole in the sky because that shimmering halo that's right next to it is bright enough that there's a really good contrast there. And that halo extends out much further than you would possibly expect. 
because I mean, the moon and the sun in the sky are actually quite small, right? They're like half a degree. They're smaller than your outstretched thumb uh, when you hold it out. But that halo extended much further out than I expected it to. And for a couple of minutes or a couple of seconds, however much time you have, just soak it in, just take it in. But as soon as totality ends, you'll start to see that like shimmering, like diamond ring effect that on, on the edge, the beads on the edge sure. again. Yeah. And that's your moment to realize, okay, I have to put my glasses back on. And then it's gone. That moment is over. And it is, it, I would best describe it as like a quasi-religious experience. Like it's it's moving mentally and emotionally. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, so... He, everything he said is right on the money yep. and, and the idea of just enjoying enjoying the moment like enjoying don't 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 take your don't worry about taking a, a shot with your iPhone you know what I mean like right don't worry about taking a picture with your iPhone right. don't worry about uh, about you know X Y and Z just just enjoy the the small time you have here in Toledo we have about a minute and 56 seconds yeah at the maximum of this path it's four minutes four and 26 seconds yep. for this particular eclipse. And I want to talk about some of that stuff in just a second. Speaking of the eclipse starting, which we told you guys it started a little bit before 2 o'clock, let's take a look at some eclipses that are happening around the country right now. Dallas is getting things started very early, almost 80% yeah. covered yeah. at this point. The sun almost 80% covered by the moon down there in Dallas, not so much here. Yeah, it is interesting. We talked about this for a very long time, how it's a, you know, it's a process. It's a two-hour process in total. Um, it's zipping, man. Every time I look at it, it is, uh, you know, I guess on the one hand, if you stare at it the whole time, it's a slow process. But boy, you take ten minutes away from it, and it is, uh, it's gonna don't fall off there. You it is, it is an incredible thing to th to, to look at. Yeah, and it's it's almost a silly thing because you, for the weeks leading up to it, you go, yeah, I mean, it's gonna cover it. But then when you put those glasses on, you look up at it, and you can do this in Southeast Michigan right now. You're not gonna for be, sure. We're not gonna be in totality in Michigan, but we're in totality here in Toledo, but even the non-totality stuff is an amazing idea of our solar system and how we are rotating around one body and another body is rotating around us. And the reason that a total solar eclipse happens here on Earth, for Earth, which it, this does not happen for other planets. This right. does not happen in other parts of our solar system that we know of, perhaps another galaxy, but the reason it happens is because of a, 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 a not, a, not a, what's the opposite of irony? What's not irony, but it's a coincidence. It's a, a strange coincidence. coincidence. Yeah. It's a strange coincidence that the earth, that the sun is 400 times larger than the earth, but the moon is 400 times closer to the earth than the yes. sun. Yes. So it is that ratio of one body being 400 times bigger, but the other body being 400 times closer. And why is that? Why is that the, why is that the case? I don't know. You I, don't know. I you don't, don't know, know either. And, and you, you, that answer is within all of us. We can choose to say whatever we want. Spiritual, religious, not scientific. Yeah. All of those things, none of those things. It is literally what you make of it. You hear you know, these folks talk about this being um, experiencing the universe in my soul. right? I think that's what Letitia Ferrer says when she, when she talks about it. And it's, um, I'm getting jazzy. I don't have the universe in my soul yet. But I'm, might, I'll tell you though. what, I'm moving closer to it. In 40 minutes, you uh -huh. might be singing a different tune. And I'm really happy because this is a solid deck of clouds. It is. It is. It but is, they're, yes. they're, they're high, they're thin. You put those glasses on and you can still see everything. Um, so we're good. We're still sitting pretty. I, I'd like to take a minute and we're good. Bet, we got a whole plan here. And yeah. I kind of like, we got yeah, you know, little commercial breaks built in. I just want to blow past it because... I, I, want, I have so much like research and stuff that I want to share, and I know you we do gotta, too. We got to give the people what they want. Did you bring your book, the David Barron book? Uh, it's in there. Yeah, it's, it's in, in the, the car. car. For sure. So I found this to be fascinating. So when I was looking at um, different eclipses that happen, and when I was listening to people talk about different uh, total solar eclipses that they have seen, all of the times are different. You know, one year they're like, oh, it's 50 seconds. Right. Or one yes. year it's a minute, 56. Yep. Or, oh, we saw a good 26 seconds. Why is that? Why are some eclipses longer than others? Why is it, Professor Derek? Well, I will tell you. Please do. Uh, student Alan. So some totalities are longer than others due to the elliptical nature of the orbit of the moon and the orbit of the Earth okay. around the sun. Okay. So it's the they're not perfect circles. They don't they're orbit not. perfect circles mm -hmm. around each other. If nope. they did, everything would be the same every the time. The same. That'd be boring. Right. But it's the orbits and it's the tilt 
of the Earth that, that play together, that give you different times. The absolute longest totality we could ever see is seven minutes and 28 seconds. And there's gonna be one of those. I do not have the year. That's gonna go right over the eye, the, the Nile. Oh, in really? E in Egypt, yeah. And Seven that's, minutes and 28 seconds. Yeah, that's, I believe, in the 2020s. So, wow. do you wanna make a trip? Do you wanna make a trip? Yeah, let's go. And the one in 2045, I believe, yes. is gonna go right over the most, what is it, the most magical place on Earth? Disney, Disney World? Disney No way! Yeah, yes. The happiest place on Earth, what, what are they calling it? Yeah. yeah, get it now. Place on Earth. Whatever it is. Uh, we would like to bring in another guest. Yes. Can you, can you come on over? Come, come on, Aaron. In. Get over here. Come on. Have a seat. Have a seat. So we love talking to Aaron earlier this afternoon, um, and so we wanted to bring her on the live stream, talk a little bit more. Um, what is this? What has this experience been like for you? Oh, it's so exciting to see this many people here at the Science Center. Actually, this is um, like my Thank first you. year working here, and so what an exciting thing to come into your first year working here and like have a total solar eclipse. It's all downhill from here. I know, but well, I hope not. <laughs> I hope not, yeah. Can you, I see you guys have an area of telescopes over there, and we learned a little bit about it, but can you tell us, with telescopes, because somebody asked me this before I left the station today. They said, can you just take your solar glasses and put them over the telescope hole and look through that? Can you explain that? I, be yeah. I believe that uh, it's, it's, it's actually zooming in so much that that's not necessarily safe. There are some extra features. You don't want um, the lens itself in the equipment gets really damaged if you let too much sunlight in. In fact, uh, our equipment is a digital telescope. It'll tell you that you can't look at the sun without solar protection. So I think for the telescope safety, you need to have a lens on the outer side. Yes. And that's what you'll see with um, binoculars too. Okay, so all of those telescopes that you see have some kind of solar lens on yes, them. Yes, and it's on the back end so that the equipment isn't, isn't damaged and your eyes. So our cameras, we've got camera crews that are out and about and around. Uh, one of our photographers, Doug Tracy, is in Wapakoneta. Yeah. And he, they too have solar lenses on there. Can you take a picture of it with your iPhone without damaging the iPhone? Yes, but you're gonna put a solar filter over the camera lens on the iPhone. Um, okay. So that you don't damage that. Wait, so you're honestly, so people are going like this? <laughs> yes. That's how they're doing it? Yes. Yes, they're putting it right over the back end of the lens. Or, you know, Derek, NASA's going to take some pretty nice looking pictures. We can just let them do that and, you know, yes. enjoy the experience. Yes, take pictures of your family and your friends. Yeah, yeah exactly. Be here. Live. So, um, what is it that you guys are doing over there? You have these high school seniors. I saw, I think, three of the girls that you're working with. I imagine it's part of a larger group. Um, what are you guys doing today? So I'm working with three girls from the local Toledo area that are in high school, um, and we're part of a bigger project uh, part called uh, the D Dynamic Eclipse Broadcast, where 80 groups all over the nation are kind of broadcasting the eclipse. We're going to compile the images that we get, and then you're going to be able to do actual legitimate research about the corona of the sun, uh, learning about the explosions that are happening on the surface that are the near surface. The sun is so bright, the surface is so bright, that we're gonna get data that we can never get, not even from space telescopes, because we're gonna be able to see the inner corona of the sun. And one of the spots that they are seeing some of that data right now, it's happening as we speak. Dallas is reaching totality right now. So, so you're narrating Dallas's totality. Welcome, Aaron. That's so awesome, yeah. Yeah, it's cool. Now, Aaron, why why do some places like why in Texas why why is Dallas getting it now and we don't get it for we're for another for another uh, hour or a half hour or so? Great question. So obviously the Earth is rotating, the Moon moves around the Earth, and it's you know it's, uh, once a month about it orbits all the way around the Earth. So that's what's leading to that curved path, and not everything's going to happen at the same time. It's really a really tiny shadow that's moving all the way across. We call that the umbra, and that umbra is very tiny, moving its way across the U.S. Umbra. Yeah, I'm going to bring something up that I don't know if you. I, I just read a couple days ago, there's this, I don't want to say rogue scientist, this scientist who redid the trigonometry calculations for the path of totality, and he was like, you guys, hold on, it's wrong. No, I'm serious. And he's like, the edge of totality is off by like two miles. Or it was some small yeah. margin. Oh, seriously? Yeah, I swear, and he's like, and we don't know if it's right or not, and now it's like, we're about to we find don't really out. know, right? Like, We've been joking about that for a few weeks. Like, oh, what if it was actually yesterday that it had, you know, but uh, <laughs> I think we're good and we'll see. I guess we'll experience it in live. Well, I think we're good because we're in it a little bit further. Yeah, we're but those good. right on the edge, I mean, I don't know. I'd be holding my breath. Yeah. 
Aaron, you guys have been doing such a great job at the Imagination Station uh, with kids, you know, with all these science experiments, and there's a lot of fun things that kids can learn uh, when it comes to, you know, the atmosphere, when it comes to the solar system. So you guys have been kicking butt doing that today. We actually, we talked to uh, another expert, um, meteorologist Matthew Capucci, who told us a few other ideas. If you have kids at home and you were wondering, what do I do with the kids with the eclipse? Well, you got 30 minutes. Listen to meteorologist Matthew Capucci as he gives you some advice on what uh, the kids might like to see. Matthew Capucci, uh, thank you so much for, for being here. This is it's so exciting to talk to you. Uh, author of Extreme Weather for Kids, a book that just came out. And I wanted to talk a bit today about kids, not necessarily extreme weather, but but the solar eclipse, which is yeah. extreme in its own way. Uh, talk to me a little bit about, about it. Definitely. So I've seen three eclipses so far, total solar eclipses. I chased the Ring of Fire annular one last year in October, actually at Balloon Fiesta in Albuquerque, New Mexico. And, you know, I've seen tornadoes, I've seen hurricanes, I've seen the northern lights. Nothing compares to a total solar eclipse. And I love this because, as it says in the book, this is the perfect opportunity to sort of show kids the wonders of the universe in a way that few people ever get to see. Matthew, you have famously said on Twitter, it's it's either totality or nothing. Here in Detroit, we're at 99% totality. And everyone keeps saying, well, Derek, 99% is practically 100. Do you agree with this? No, it, it's literally night and day because in the path of totality, you have the moon block the sun fully, which means all the sunlight goes away. You have these weird shadows, shadow banding and stuff like that. But the biggest thing is that only in that path of totality, you can see the corona, the sun's atmosphere. And the fact that in a little narrow zone on Earth, you can stare at the sun's atmosphere, 93 million miles away at the atmosphere of a star is incredible. And this is the only time humans get to see it. If you're even half a mile outside the path, you don't see it. And the other thing, too, we don't really think about it, but the sun is incredibly bright. So even if one or two percent of the sun is shining, that's still enough to completely illuminate the, the landscape. And so if you want all those things that come with the total solar eclipse, you have to be in that path of totality. Close just doesn't cut it. It really is yeah. night. Nice. Totality or bust. Um, OK, so I've got I've got a, a seven year old and a six year old. I've been trying to talk to them about the eclipse as somebody who wrote a kid's book. Uh, how do you explain what an eclipse is to a child? I, I sort of, you know, I, I always tell them the, the basics, you know, the moon's passing in front of the sun. But I think what the kids love the best is seeing the dramatic changes in the landscape right before the shadow banding, the last moments before the moon fully obscures the sun, all the light is what's called collimated. So all the rays are parallel coming in the same direction and they start to interfere with air pockets in the atmosphere. So kids always love seeing that weird interference pattern on the ground about 90 seconds before and after totality. So I always tell parents to bring a white sheet they can put down so there's something for the, the weird shadow bands to be cast upon, and the kids love seeing that. The other thing too, bring a piece of paper, go to the shade of trees because all little gaps in the leaves act as pinhole projectors and the kids can see their own miniature versions, miniature shadows, projections of the sun being eclipsed and they always love that. The toughest part that I always find is reminding folks that they can take off the glasses during totality. Mm. I've heard from folks before who go through peak totality with the glasses on, they're like, I saw nothing. I'm like, of course you saw nothing. <laughs> Totality is when you take them off, you missed a grand show. But realistically, yeah, during totality, when all the harmful sunlight is blocked, then you can take off the glasses because the corona, the atmosphere of the sun, is only about a millionth as bright as the actual sun. So we can look at that. We just can't look at the UV rays. So anytime, even one little pinprick of sunlight, that's bad. But once the moon is fully blocking the sun, then we're good to go. The other thing, too, I'd say pick a place and stay with it. You never want to be going back and forth for last minute cloud cover. I think it's important for folks to remember that a lot of the low level clouds associated with, you know, summertime weather, humidity, oftentimes die off right before totality because the atmosphere is cooling a little bit. There's a 15 minute lag between the start of, you know, the, the eclipse and when the clouds start to fizzle out a little bit. And the last thing too is people oftentimes we'll start watching eclipse and think, yeah, nothing really looks different. You don't see much of a change until like 85% of the sun is covered by the moon. And then things look really weird. The shadows are sharper. The light seems dim, but eerie. It's a weird color. It's like a sepia effect on your iPhone. It's bizarre. And it's natural for folks to almost feel a little bit uneasy or have these weird chaotic emotions.
Yeah, weird chaotic emotions. It is, oh, it is possible. Welcome to my inner right. emotional structure. <laughs> but he did give some good. He did give some good tips for kids. And I bumped into a kid, but a family here. Me? Uh, no, not you. Not me. No, no, no. Zarella over here. Because what I was doing, I was I was walking around and I was like, I was like, hey, where are you from? Hey, where? I just want to see like who's where's the farthest yes. somebody came from. Zarella, explain where you came from today. I'm from Fort Myers, Florida. She came from Fort Myers, Florida. To see the, when did you fly out? What was your flight? Yesterday. You flew out yesterday. And I'm flying back tonight. Tonight? Yeah. That is fantastic. Why did you choose Toledo? Because, well, I live in Fort Myers as a small airport, and, uh, you know, everybody's trying to fly. All the, all the tickets are very expensive, so I started looking what is closer, and the closest airport that wasn't super crazy on prices was Detroit, and I figured it was only a you know, like an hour drive, so I rented a car, and here we are. So she, Fort Myers, Florida, Detroit, Michigan, drive down to Toledo, see the eclipse, back to Detroit, back home tonight. Yes. That's fantastic. Have you done this before, or is this your first? It's my first time. And what what prompted you to do that? Because I feel like I that one from a few years ago, I, I didn't know in enough time in advance, and this year I'm like, I'm going to do it. It's now or never. I mean, at least I know that it's 20 years for us to, to have one in U.S. again, so. Yeah. And is she is she excited? Yeah. It's her first time. I mean, she's three, so I didn't know if she was going to remember anything or not, but she remembers a lot of things, and I think this is a uh, once-in-a-life experience. So next time she, she does this, she will be like 23 years old. Well, Zarella, I think you've I think you've taken the cake for today. You did it. You won you won the game. You won motherhood. Yeah. Job well done. We talked to people from Lansing, Okemos, Ann Arbor, yeah. Monroe. Um, Central Ohio. Toledo. T Toledo. Toledo. They're a lot from Toledo. Uh -huh. I don't uh -huh. know why. So many people from Toledo so are here weird. in Toledo. Yeah. But from Fort Myers, Florida, up here to see the eclipse, I think you've won. Yay! Yay. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Wonderful. And it's, by the way, Toledo is a very nice city. So yes. I'm yeah. And I will give you a lot of credit because making those rockets is not simple. No. And it's a very difficult thing. All yeah. right. So we're going to take Thank a quick you. little break here. Uh, we're going to get some things reset. We still have some more interviews to show you as we approach totality. Yes. Here in Toledo, it is not uh, not totality yet. Dallas is just finishing up their Dallas, totality. Yes. Looks fantastic. Beautiful shots there from Dallas. We're so glad that we were able to share those with you throughout uh, this live stream and talking to the, the two Zarella there. But well, what, when one city finishes, another one begins. I'm so excited. We've got I'm, more to show you. I'm getting giddy, man. We got, what, 20 minutes? 25 minutes? 25 minutes. 20 don't count. Yeah, something. That's right. Something. That's close enough. It's on the way. All right, we'll take a quick break, and we will be right back here to continue covering the great eclipse, American Eclipse 2024. Don't go anywhere.
All right, welcome back. Uh, you still, uh, if you're looking here, you're seeing us in the middle of your screen, but up in these boxes around us, uh, Dallas uh, just finishing up their total solar eclipse. So they're already coming to an end. Ours has not yet begun. And I say ours, I mean Toledo, because everyone's a to Toledo, Tol Toledo in. Toledo Everyone, in. Everyone's a Tol Toledo in today. We're with the mayor of Toledo here. Tell us a little bit about Wade. Uh, tell us a little bit about uh, what it, uh, what this means for the city of Toledo. Well, this is just exciting for everyone. You can see the, uh, the amount of folks here downtown in the core of our city. Um, we like to think that every day in Toledo is special, but this is doubly special just because of the way it brings people together uh, around a family-friendly, fun science event. I mean, look, the fact of the matter is, um, unless you're about 10 years old, you won't live to see this happen again in Toledo. Next time this happens is September 14th, 2099. 99. Uh, so this is it. This is a once in a lifetime event and uh, we're excited and we're glad that you came down and spent some time with us today. You guys, so the, the Imagination Station, they were expecting about 5,000 people to be here today. A big influx of people into uh, Toledo, people going out to eat, you know, trying the local cuisines. It's all good stuff. It's good stuff provided you all spent money uh, in, so, Toledo. in Toledo. No, it's, <laughs> there are tens of thousands of people just in and around the Toledo area. The Mud Hens, uh, the AAA affiliate for your Tigers. Uh, there's a big event over at their stadium across the way. The various city parks, the Glass Bowl where the UT Rockets play. There's a 50... Uh, 50 yard line viewing party. So a lot, of, a lot of fun, a lot of excitement. Great stuff. And I tell you, when Toledo was founded, we were initially located in Michigan. Uh, we know this. So now I feel the world has come full circle and now Michigan has come back to, to, we to, to Toledo. We've all circled back to Toledo, the glass city. That's right. We, we know uh, this. We're the glass city. <laughs> That's right. We also make and invented the Jeep. So there you go. Mayor Wade, thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, it's great to just talk to everybody around here be around here uh, hey we wanted to show you uh, we're getting closer and closer but we wanted to show you a little bit about there are there are descriptions of total solar eclipses and the splendor of it and one of the folks that described it in a poetic way uh, we would like to uh, introduce you to them here they are I really want everybody to feel the joy all beauty amazement the, for me, I feel the universe in my soul, and I want everybody to feel that. And one of my frustrations right now is everybody's talking safety, 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 safety. Get totally, I want you to be safe, but and then traffic, traffic, traffic. It's like no, it's beauty, it's awe, it's amazement, it's wonder, it's the universe in your soul, it's above you, around you, in you. It's an amazing experience, and that is why people are coming from all over the world to see it. That is why people who saw it in 2017 are not missing this one. It is, it is, I remember 2017. I saw the partial. Okay. And I, and I saw the partial, and then I remember seeing a, a television segment um, with a, um, a meteorologist who saw the total, and I remember watching him cry. And let's just, I felt so confused about why he was crying. <laughs> and then, and then I started listening to your podcast. And like, I don't understand it because I've never seen one, but you gave me such, such a window into what that world is. What does that mean to you? It, it's, I, when, I, when you are in the path, it, you're, you're aligned with the sun, the moon, the earth, and you, you are aligned to be there in the path. And so I, one point of me is, I feel like the luckiest person, the most grateful person in the universe the other piece of me, it's such great humility because you realize just how big the universe is for us to even exist here in this moment in space and time. And it's not just knowing it in your head, you know, orbital dynamics, the sun, the earth revolves around the sun, the move around. It's not knowing it in your head. It's feeling it in your soul because you see the moon cross over and it's just, it's orbital dynamics, but it's. It's happening in front of you. And then to see the giant, the corona coming out from behind the moon because the sun's covered up. We can't ever see the corona because the sun's so blinding. But when the moon covers it up, we see the corona and it's so beautiful. And then you see the prominences coming out from behind the moon that are multiple Earths of diameter shooting out from behind the moon. That, that concept of just how big that is. And because that exists, we exist. It's just a, but it get, again, it's not in my head, it's in my heart, it gets in my soul. 
and it's I, I've now I've done it twenty times, and it hasn't gotten old. And I don't think it ever will be. That's insane. Twenty it times isn't. because. Because they, they don't have, I mean, they happen often, right? What every one and a half, every years eleven about. to eighteen months on average, somewhere on the planet. You've done some traveling. To I've get done to a those lot of traveling. Eclipses. Seven continents, six oceans so far. That's wild. That's so cool. When you like, take us back. Take us back to pre-total eclipse, Letitia. Did you? Did you? Ex what were you expecting? Because who you are now is not who you were then. Well, who I was. Well, I tell you what. I'll tell you when I got inspired to even see my first one. Do you know the song? Remember the song, You're So Vain? You're so vain. I oh, bet yeah. you think this song is about you. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Yes. That song came out when I was like 12 or 13 years old. And it had this line in it. Then you flew your Learjet to Nova Scotia to see a total eclipse of the sun. So I was like, wow, rich people who own Learjets, take them to go see total solar eclipses. That's got to be cool. So I went and looked it up in the library, and it was cool. It was math and science and the orbits. And there was going to be some, you know, around me. And I just wanted to see one sometime in my lifetime. So back to when I was 30, 1991, the eclipse came to Mexico. And this was back, on, I'm going to date myself here. This was back when you go to Mexico with your driver's license. You didn't even need a passport. Oh, they let they let us do that, huh? All right, yeah, all right. That's how many. That's 1991. Anyway, so I went down there to see it, and it was actually the longest solar eclipse of the century back then. And I lost my breath. I forgot to breathe for like the first 30 seconds of the eclipse. It was so beautiful and stunning. I felt like this small little pit of primitive fear in my stomach when that moon first covered totally covered the sun and the sun went out it is just like it's like a black hole with the corona around it so i felt a little bit of primitive fear but then i was just so stunned by the beauty and the amazement and just the the whole realization of just how much of the universe is out there that exists just for us to be here in this moment All right, we're back. Hey, uh, things are at the party. Hey, it's hey, going here. It's, it's getting wild. It is fun. It's funny because it's like I'm getting colder, and yeah. you're getting colder, and you thought it was getting. I, I just the clouds were. I bigger. thought obviously the clouds were getting. Bigger, but then Derek reminded me that this is a total solar eclipse. Yeah. Like I distinctly feel cold. Oh yeah. Colder. It's chilly. I'm going jean jacket here soon. You can feel the fact that the temperature is dropped. All right, here's what we're gonna do. We are 12 minutes away. Yes. We're gonna do a quick little two minute break here so we can get our bearings set, get oh. our cameras all set, oh. and then the next time you see us, that will be take you right to it, to the moment of totality, beginning and ending, and then Alan will cry on live television. Second contact. <laughs> Second right. contact. All right, baby. quick break. We'll be right back. Don't go anywhere.
think when you look at it? What do you think, Ellie? I, th I think I'm cold, it and is... I could use a hug. I could use somebody to hold me. It is. Here, I could be that person. Thank you, anybody. thank you. So no, that, I would good. say what it's like 95% covered. Oh yeah, right? Like 95 it's just, and a half. It is a small little fingernail of a sun left. Yeah. And all of the stuff that they said, they being the solar eclipse experts, yep. it will get colder during the eclipse. Yes. It will begin to get darker as if it's twilight and sun yes. setting. I legitimately feel like the temperature may have dropped five degrees. Oh, it has, and I've heard them, I heard they said that, remember to me, they said five degrees, it'll drop five degrees. I remember thinking in my head, that's nothing. Yeah, and it's not. I mean, I'm not shivering cold. It's fine, but it is a noticeable difference. I'm, I am cold. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like I am cold. I but it bumps. is getting darker. I got the goosebumps. And you start thinking, oh, oh, the clouds are. Oh man, the clouds are rolling. In. Now, first off, no. there, there is a there is a deck of cirrus clouds, which are out here, but it it like it plays with your brain a little bit. It like does. You you believe that something different is happening. Oh, it's cold fronts coming through. Uh, clouds are rolling in. No, it's just that the sun is leaving. Yeah, we're we're creatures of habit, and when. The sun goes black in the middle of the day, our bodies respond to it. Yes. And then our brains try to craft a story and they say, what is this? And then you start to malfunction. I start feeling like I'm like I'm feeling like a little tired, like I want to go to bed. Right now? Yes! Get out of here! Oh, the sun is setting. It Get feels like the sun is coffee. setting. No. Uh, Alright, so uh, totality happening in roughly eight minutes. Eight minutes here. Uh, a few more things to note that I want to make sure I say before. You have I've more fun facts. facts? I got more facts. Yeah, wait a minute, you. you have more fun facts. During the moment of totality, you will weigh 1.7 ounces less. Okay. 90% coverage. 90% coverage. That's exactly what we said. We said 95. Pretty close. <laughs> we deal <laughs> with percentages in our, yeah. in our yeah. line of work. We're, we're fine with 5%. 1.7 ounces less you will weigh during okay. the moment of totality Great. due to Newton's law of gravity. Sure. You will be 40 millimeters closer to the sun during the eclipse due to the sun and the moon's pull on the Earth's crust. So you are closer to the sun. To the sun. During the eclipse. Isn't that wild? Thrust because of the... What? What are you looking? At? I don't know. I just felt they, I thought I felt a raindrop. I didn't feel a raindrop. No. It's I don't know. Playing, it's playing. I don't know what it is. You. While you do this, yeah. while you do this, there's you know, generally they will celebrate with perhaps wine or champagne. It's post, a big thing in circles. Post yeah. totality. Chase but, circles. But here, I think we're gonna start cracking that open now. You've been making fun you're looking, of me. You're looking at Indianapolis right now at full totality. That's Indianapolis full, oh, at full totality. Since it's full totality in, in Indianapolis. Indianapolis You've got. I think it's time. Wait, no, 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 no! You cannot pop that until after totality happens. That. So first off, Alan is not just bringing this for the sake of bringing it. No. This is an. This is a thing with eclipse no. chasers. After totality, right. they pop champagne. Right. For like, we made it. We did it. It happened. We saw it. Okay. It's a big moment. I think you have to wait. So to be clear, we're gonna wait. But also to be clear, the 18 times when we discussed doing it before, we did. We're gonna. We're gonna go back. Okay. It's live TV, okay. Alan. You this got is a married roll couple. This is a married couple right this here. This is the fourth, four we'll thousand seven hundred eighty-six solar eclipse of any kind, annular or total, since the year one. Did you know that? I do. Did now. you know that? Uh, wait. What is Indianapolis is in totality? We just got the word here. Indianapolis is in totality. Breaking news. Oh, real quick. In in totality, or perhaps outside of it, well, you wouldn't want to do this outside of it, but in totality, when you can look directly at the sun, you may see uh, Jupiter and Venus present on either side of the sun during totality. So if during totality you see two uh, stars, two, two shining lights, it could be Venus and Jupiter on either side of the sun. How's that? I feel, I feel replenished. I feel like my... My fact heart is full. Take people through what they will see, Alan, because you did a lot of research on this. Bailey's beads. Hello. <laughs> Bailey's so, beads. So what we saw was first contact, and that's when the, the moon begins to eat away at the sun. We're yes. about to enter second contact here in Toledo. Again, this is not something in Southeast Michigan. Um, that'll be second contact. That'll be the beginning of totality. And when we see that, um, or, or before we see that, you'll start to see these bright these bright lights, these, this shimmering effect on the outside of the, of the sun of the moon and what that is the sun's light shining through the the craters the mountains and the valleys of the moon and the astronomer who who discovered that his last name was bailey and so they are bailey's beads yeah. and when that happens you still need to have your glasses on 
because that that is those are direct sun's you rays. You may Do also not take them off. You may also see a thing called. 95%. We're getting close, Alan. Yes, we are. Um, you may also see a thing called shadow banding on the Shadow channel, banding, yes. Which is the shadows that look like, essentially like snakes on the ground, but right before and right after, it is possible that we may see them in the next few yeah. minutes here on our ground, and then immediately after totality, we could see them Ooh. again on this concrete. And and then the, fi the final Bailey's bead, they call it the, the diamond ring effect, and that's the, the culmination of it. And that kind of signals to you you're then able to take off your glasses after that. And then you take your glasses off if you're in the path of totality. That is again here in Toledo. And then we have here, we have almost two minutes. It's about a minute in 40 some seconds, We're a minute 50 close. some it's seconds. 308 with totality. 308. We're going to four minutes. 312. We're going to take you right up to 311, and then we're going to shut our yappers and just let you enjoy. So during the moment, we're not going to say a single word. No, the two How minutes. How hard is that going to be for this guy? Do you think you can do it? Doable. Do you think you can do it? Do you need to talk a lot right now? Get it out of your system? No, because oh, I still have a few more facts. <laughs> Did you know that everyone in the United States has experienced a totality in their in their area oh, since wow. the U.S. became a country in 1776? Well, I didn't know that. Isn't that pretty cool? Eclipse sunglasses are 1,000 times darker no. than regular sunglasses. They are. 1,000 times. I like it when you do that, when you look up and I can see your eyeball from underneath the glasses. We're getting real close. Yeah, we are. We're getting very Gosh, close. Gosh, we're probably about we're probably about 100 seconds away from just stopping and letting the world. I mean, that, Is it, 100 it seconds? looks like an album cover. Yeah. What would our, what would our single Two be called? Two minutes away. Lima is in totality at this moment. Oh, Lima's in totality. I, that's our photog, Doug. Doug no, Tracy is near Lima. Yeah, but he's in Wapakoneta. Well, I know, but that's south of Lima, so he's already in totality. That's yes. the point, smart guy. Our shot is now what viewers are seeing on their computer screens, TV screens. Those orange colors that you see are due to the hydrogen atoms in the sun's corona. That's what gives it that orange sliver right there. Did you know that the uh, an eclipse allowed us to uh, discover helium, smart guy? Did you know that? Alan? We are about Doesn't even listen to me. Away. Doesn't Any listen final to me. thoughts in 30 seconds? You All right. Just up. So what you're going to, you're keeping track of this. You're going to tell me when to stop talking? Yeah. Here's what we're going to do, folks. Ladies and gentlemen, enjoy this moment. Because that ain't total yet. Yeah. That ain't total. Enjoy this moment. Oh, Alan how are you I feeling? Just, I'm feeling excited to be here with you, my friend. So guys, uh, enjoy it. You'll hear back from us after totality is complete. Wait, in how, roughly two minutes. Wait, how close are we? Totality in Toledo happening in roughly 60 seconds. No. Everybody, enjoy. Does that mean we can't talk anymore?
That's a huge difference already. That is a, that is an incredible, that is an incredible, incredible moment. Woo. What are you feeling? What are you I thinking? I, I, weird. I feel odd. Um, I feel like I'm waking up. Yeah. That was something, man. That, it's hard. For the last three weeks as we've been interviewing people, we have been hearing them say it's hard to describe it it's hard to explain it it's hard to it's hard to sh like tell someone else what it's like i continue to hear the word ineffable right the word that's used to describe something that you don't know how to describe and, and that's what that is that is what that was yeah and it is it is noticeably brighter noticeably brighter in 20 seconds after the sun started pop, popping back out now 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 may I pop that? Now may what I pop What took you so long? Now I pop, pop that. Congratulations, buddy. Congrats, man. That that was with everything that we have heard, planned for, expected. It's hard to know what you're gonna get in a moment like this, and especially where it's it's all dependent on the weather and the clouds. And will it rain? Will it be cloudy? You could plan everything for years and get to a spot and have it not pay off because it was cloudy that day. And those and now, clouds, yeah. those clouds, I mean, I don't know how much of the the corona may have been dampened a bit. From the clouds? From the clouds. It's None. it's so hard. It's such a short Beautiful. Time. Matt saying everything was there. Yeah. Beautiful. The beads. Yeah. Did you, the beads, you saw the red thing, the red dot? At the end. That what, was. I, yeah. Because you and don't always that get that. So you, distinctly different. You don't always see all of these, all the phenomena. Do you see any of the? I didn't. I didn't even look at the. At the I didn't see any of the shadow banding. No. But I also didn't look. I was too. I was just soaking it in, man. Oh, it was like time went. I didn't see the real shadows. slow, but real fast. Just a whole odd, odd situation. You keep talking. Yeah, I gotta, it I did. It, 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 you're right. There was this weird phenomenon where. It felt like it was both happening very quickly, but also very slowly. And I appreciated it that, I mean, people were very excited when it first happened. And there was a, ooh, but then it did kind of quiet down. And it just, like, you kind of get inside yourself and you have this introspective moment where you can uh, appreciate. You can just appreciate what is happening with the solar system. It puts in perspective for you, for me, how, thank you, how small I am 
and how big this world is, this world, this solar system, this galaxy. We're all circling around that thing right there. Let's wax poetic we with the weather boys. And we just saw it. We yeah. just saw it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I yeah. think people are just excited at this point. All right, as is the case with with chasers, with solar eclipse chasers, afterward, a successful eclipse happens. And the champagne is popped. And this is not our thing. This is, this not is, our a, thing. This is an industry-wide solar chaser thing. So, hey, to you, to Matt, to Brian, who's Brian. crying back there. Yeah, he is. Or maybe is. just itching his eye. I couldn't tell. I'm not one or the sure. Other. Yeah. Could have been of, both. I that's a lot of, that's a strong allergy, if that's what that is. To you, buddy. To you. Look at that. Wow. We did it. Just amazing. And we're not done yet. No. No. Thank God we're not done yet, because I have more thoughts. I just I can't I get need them out. Time. I, I need time to put them into. Wow. All right. So we clearly need a break. Yes. We're, yeah, this is just, it feels, uh, feels like a I want to sit happened. in it. I want to bathe in it. A thing just I happened. I want to, hey, a quick break following the moment of totality here in the path of totality from the Imagination Station in Toledo. We'll take a quick two and a half minute break. And we'll be back with more after this. So we, uh, we've recouped. We took two and a half minutes to yes. get our breath back because boy, you talk about a, a moment that takes your breath away and we just had it. Yeah, it took my words away. The job is to speak. Yeah, I you're really don't know a what lot to on say. Me here, I buddy. don't know what to say. <laughs> what would you say? What, give, me th give me a word, give me one word. Right now, now, don't think. Incredible. Now. Incredible. incredible. I think the most incredible thing to me was that red bead at the, at the bottom. Because yeah. I was like, what is that thing? And then you said, that's a Bailey's bead. And I thought to myself, I'm not actually, like, we talk about these things where, oh, you're going to see this, you're going to see that. And I thought, well, no, you're not actually, like, I'm not actually going to see it on that day. Right. But I did. Yeah. And, 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 and I knew what I was looking for, and I still didn't know that's what it was. It was so awe-inspiring that I was shocked that I saw it. 
that makes any sense. No, it does. I'm trying to figure out which was was more awe-inspiring, to see the visual up there or to see the whole 360 environment down here. Because I, I heard, I think there's a the Dr. Kate Russo, she's a psychologist and a, and a number file. Yeah. Um, I listened to her speak and she says that the eclipse is, it's above us, it's yes. around us, and it's within us. Famously says that, yeah. yes. Yeah, yes. and it is, and it's hard to, to I guess it's hard, you don't have to. It's My innate interest is to put a, uh, a qualifier on, on each one. This was a seven. This was a ten. This was a twelve. I'm just I'm trying to put it all you into perspective, to. and it's a hard to. thing to do. Above us was incredible. Around us, that was, was interest. Was very interesting, yeah. especially from a meteorological perspective, where you're like, no, it's three fifteen. It shouldn't be dark and cold. And you said, I th you said I see a bat flying. I, 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 yeah, I, I don't know did. if it was a bat, but that would have been that would have been was a normal. Pre -champagne. That would have been a normal thing. For nocturnal creatures to think, oh, now's my time. Yes. And come out. So you seeing a bat would have fit in that moment. Yeah. And then it's within you, like she says, because then you have all these feelings in here of whatever it may be for you. For the individual, it's different. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I mean, how wonderful to share that with 5,000 of our closest friends. It was. It was a, it was a mania. It was a small scale mania. That, yeah. You know, everybody, everybody was in on it. There, and if, like, there was this group of teenage boys behind us. Teenage boys, well, yeah, young yeah. girls, like, I'm just- Different different groups is what you're Different to groups of people all impacted in the same way, expressing it differently, sure, but I just think about me when I was a teenage boy. Like, teenage boys are like, what are they? Like, baseball, basketball, sports, girls? Yeah, right. To be moved in such a way by this, that speaks to the enormity of the of the event. There was one kid behind us that said, this was the, this is the coolest thing I've ever seen. Yeah. This like, is the coolest thing I've ever seen. And that's, seen. he saw WrestleMania. Yeah, I'm sure and he, he still did. thinks this is the coolest thing. Hey guys, come over here real quick. We just want to know what oh, you thought yeah. about it. Come on in. This is live, by the way. So get over here. Stand right Hello. here. Stand hi, right hi, here. Hi, hi, Stand hi, right hi. here. Hi. hi. What's your name? Alea. What did you think? What were your thoughts? It was real nice. I think it got dark. Well, it got. It was real nice. It was sweet. I haven't seen something like that since like sixth grade. I'm a senior now, so it's like. Yeah. yeah it connects you from your beginning to end. What's your name? Jayama. What'd you think? What, what, how, did, how did you feel about seeing it versus feeling it? Feeling it, it was something like, it was not something too big, but it was like, you could feel the change, especially in the weather, but seeing it was very pretty. It was very pretty. Yeah. Now, this is, was this your first one? And are you going to go see all of the rest of them now? <laughs> this was my first one. I was inside on the other one, but yeah, I'm going to see the other ones. Yeah. Hopefully. Nice. All right. Nice. Nice. Thank you, guys. Thank Appreciate you. it. Thanks a yeah. lot. Now, the question is... When do they drive home? Because all of these people, yeah, I see them all now, the city. packing up, trying to get out, gathering. They're all gonna run into that bottleneck. Should we call? Ask I, I just want to yeah, know this it. guy. No, hey, yes, yes, hey, yes, 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 come here, come here, come here. You're on TV. I just want to know. You've got the shirt. You've got the lanyard. Come on up here. Step up here. Stand right here. Stand right here. What's your name? Abel. What'd you think about it, man? It was. <coughs> um, I was gonna say it's uh, it was amazing. Amazing. Yeah. Um. I mean, that was my first time seeing it. I mean, I really liked it. And um, I want to say this was the best day I've ever had. <laughs> let, that's fair. let me that. ask you, Abel, let me, before you. you go, Abel, a man with a lanyard like that coming into this must have been excited, must have had high expectations. Did this meet your expectations? Uh, Probably, yeah. 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 There we yeah, go. The well worth the hype, well yeah. he says. Yeah. Well worth the hype. Thank you, guys. guys. Get home safe. Get home safe. Um. So during the moment of totality, there are a lot of scientific experiments being done. Yes. That is true with every eclipse, but it is absolutely true with this one as well. And you talked to somebody who explained some of the important uh, important ones that are taking place. Yeah, it's a project called Citizen Kate that uh, spans the path of totality where citizen scientists, um, you know, put on their scientist hat and, and they learn and they observe. Uh, so there's more on this with Letitia Ferrer. So the, the moon covers up the sun, and what does that allow us to see during it the total eclipse? So it allows us to see the corona, because right, right when you look at the sun right now, it's just so bright you can't look at it. And now we have spacecraft and stuff that can see the outer corona pretty well. But it's hard, still hard to see the inner corona and the middle corona. And then on top of that, you want to look at it in the different colors and different layers. And that's what the Kate, Citizen Kate program is doing. Great. So these two to four minutes of totality offer so us an opportunity that is unlike any other moment in yes. time. Well, let me give you an example. 
the, in 1919, the solar eclipse then proved Einstein's theory of relativity. Oof. Okay. So we don't know well, how, we, how, how, why? Can you tell us how, why in this moment, or is it too in-depth? So th that? Einstein's re theory of relativity is that the big, because the sun is such a big gravitational force that it would actually band light around it. So they calculated where a certain star would be behind the sun. And then in the eclipse, they measured where it appeared to be. And there was a difference. And that difference was, fit in with the math of the calculation of the gravity would pull the light for. So the dimness of the dimness of the eclipse allowed the me accurate measurement to happen. Yes. Is that right? Okay, cool. Sweet. Awesome. Okay. So that's back then. What are you doing now? We're basically looking at the corona across polar uh, and polarized light. So the cameras have different are che are checking each color of the polarized and different angles of the light. So we're going to be able to get this polarized view of the corona as it uh, as it travels all across the path. There's awesome, because you five locations, and all of these are citizen scientists. They were locally recruited citizen scientists from these areas that are doing. Some of them are high school kids. Some of them are college kids. Some of them are teachers. Some of them are professors. Some are just local citizens. And that's such a cool. That's such a cool concept because we, I think, especially as of late, um, a lot of culture has thought of science as this high up thing that you can only get through certain certification and like, it's almost like a deity, but like yes. science is a search for the truth. Anybody can actually do that. And Anybody you guys do are it. doing that. The, actually, the, the, I heard a great thing on, I think it, um, the, the difference between a hobby and science is writing it down. <laughs> it's documenting yeah. it. It's yes. documenting it. Yes. And we're going to be documenting it. Yeah. I mean, that's... So we're going to be documenting. So the, each of these teams, is getting a telescope, a camera, and a computer. They're being, they've done several training sessions to learn how to use it. They've done several practice sessions to learn how to use it. We're talking, they have to be dedicated to do this. So what are you, what are you hoping to, to learn from this? So we're hoping to learn um, how the activity of the sun drives the corona, how solar flares, become up from the corona and drive uh how the prominences turn into solar flares like we had the solar flare the other day and then there was a solar flare i think two years ago that took out a whole flock of starlink satellites so solar flares impact our atmosphere and our electronics so the better we can predict and manage them the better we can manage our equipment to, to be prepared for it and the more we can see them, the more we can observe them, the more we can know about them, and therefore right. hopefully exactly. Okay. And cool. every little bit helps. Here we go. I love Letitia. Yeah. Oh, she's fantastic. Like she after after listening to the podcast with her, yeah. you know? Because you got me turned on to that, by the way. Yeah. I listened to all of them. Yeah. And yeah. then not like, like, and then the fact that you got to talk to her, like, what an incredible thing. And what a wonderful woman, because this is her, this is not, this is more than her Super Bowl. Super Bowl happens every year. This is her, I, I don't know, what, Detroit Lions Super Bowl. Maybe. That's what this is for her. And for her to give us her time, yeah, you know, when nice. she spread so thin. Yeah, she was wonderful. You know who's going to need to have a lot of time? Yeah. Dri drivers headed north on I-75. Yes. We've got a shot of uh, a Sky Fox, Sky Fox. Out flying around. Yeah, uh, a, a parking lot on 75 as four lanes trying to converge down to, I don't know, what is it, two at some spots? Not good. It is a mess for people trying to get out of here and get back home. So thank goodness we're not going anywhere. We're going to linger. We might not make it back in time for work tomorrow, bosses. Right. That's not our fault. Hey, if we get stuck in Toledo at the Imagination Station, we'll do weather live from here. The DJ is turning the music up. It really is. All right, Carl, we got to turn back to you. We started yes. the show with you. We want to end the show with you. What did you think? It was amazing. You know, you, like you guys said, you read all sorts of stories. You read up on it. You know the science behind it. But the moment came, it was like, wow. Because I did not expect the, the brightness to drop so dramatically. It slowly got dim. But then as we got closer, it just went boom. And it was dark. We did have some high clouds, but we could still see prominences, like stuff coming off the sun. Um, it was just amazing. And I almost, I, I'll admit, I started to get like a little choked up and it's like,
no, I don't want to get teary-eyed because I want to keep seeing it. Yeah. Right? <laughs> and just the, the thing that got me, I think, the most excited was the roar of the crowd. It did, right? didn't as, it? As it was going, and we were almost there, almost there, and it's just like this roar, and it's like, oh my gosh. <laughs> and then, boom, we're there. It, it, and it, it was, I, yeah, it was... I know why other people that I've talked to that have seen Totality use the word weird a lot, because the lighting was weird. Yes. It, it, it's hard to describe, like the steely gray weirdness. It was like a glow. Like, it, for me, yeah. I, I would describe it as like, it had like a little bit of a glow. So it wasn't like sunset, but it, in a way it was, but it was like sunset from all directions. We could look, yeah. look out over the river and you could see like, it looked like sunset, but there was no sun to be seen. Yes, yeah. Um, it was just... Yeah, I mean, again, this is this is why if you ever have the chance to see a total eclipse, you need to get in the path of totality. I, it it speaks to the strangeness of it and the the fact that we're so used to what we're used to that like we've been we know about these things. We haven't seen one, but I've read seventy two different accounts of people what to expect. And during totality, before totality, I, I said to Derek, I think the clouds are thickening up. And we're seeing less and less sun. And he goes, no, dummy. Yeah, the, the, sun, the eclipse less and less is continuing. Sun. Like, we're, <laughs> like, like it, it didn't even, es it escaped my brain, this very, very simple fact of the matter because I just wasn't expecting it. It's a wild, it, wild thing. For me, it was the temperature. I, I was floored at how cold, how chilly it got. It is 70 degrees today. It's already getting warmer outside. But when it was getting close to the moment, I was cold. You know, that's funny because I was so caught up in it and I knew about the temperature change. I tell people this all the time. I paid no attention to it. Yeah. Like I was just like, uh, staring yeah. up at the sky. And I even, it was afterwards, I go, oh, I didn't even pay attention to the temperature. But I'm glad, because I what I saw was just simply awesome. Yeah. yeah, there's so many elements to it that you try to hit one of everything, but you almost can't. And now I get why people chase these things around the world so they can Absolutely. get that one other thing that they missed to get. Oh, I didn't get to see the shadow bands. I was I was I was too busy looking up. I didn't look down. I want to look down and see the shadow bands, but I understand why you didn't look down because you're so focused on looking up. I mean, it's Sorry, I got a lot of thoughts. I got a lot yeah. of feelings. No, we I, we talked <laughs> earlier about the one I forget. I think it's in the 2020s. It's just going to go across Egypt for I believe 7 minute totality. Six and a half Six minutes a half. in Egypt, and it passes through Luxor. Not quite. It's not quite the pyramids, but it's close, right? So, I mean, if you're looking for a trip, I'm looking for a trip. I think I may be going. Yeah. After, after this, yeah, and that would feel like an eternity. I like, know. Triple the time that we just had. So yes. I read. I don't. I, I. I can't verify if it's 100 percent true, but I could see it. That we, back back thousands of years ago, Native American tribes during a total solar eclipse would shoot arrows that they lit on fire up at the sun to reignite it. I, and you know what? It's funny about that. People would shoot uh, cannons and rifles at the sun as well to try to rekindle it. Yeah. And it's easy to look back at them and laugh, but you know what? It always worked. <laughs> the sun always they came were, back. They were onto something, these guys. And honestly, I don't blame them because that's that was a weird thing that we just saw. There was somebody behind me that said, I'm worried it's not going to come back. And I was like, ah. But then I was like, I, wait, yeah. Can we confirm? <laughs> Can we confirm this wasn't Armageddon? This was not Armageddon. We did okay. But you're absolutely right. Throughout most of human history, dread and end of days is what people thought. And you can understand now why they would think that. If you didn't know this was coming, that would have been absolutely terrifying. 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 Goodness gracious. All right. So the, the question that is always asked as soon as one eclipse ends. They say, when can we play Mommy Shark again? Baby when can Shark. We mommy Shark. Yep. Daddy, no. They say after one eclipse ends, they say, when's the next one and where is it? Professor Lacluse from uh, the beautiful Mount Pleasant Central Michigan University. He has that answer. This doesn't happen often, every year and a half across the earth, but locally at any one area, I mean, we're talking what, once every 375 years, give or take? Yeah. So for any given location on earth, ballpark every 330 years, you'll have an eclipse. Okay. Ballpark. But that's on average, right? So you could have two back to back. So like the folks in, I think it's like Carbondale, Illinois, it's like Southern Illinois. Okay. They caught the 2017 eclipse, and they're also going to catch this eclipse just because they're in just the right place. But for most places, once in a human lifetime, your local place, if you're lucky, you know, one third of the people, right? Because it's every 300 years or so. Um, here in the U.S., we've been lucky that we've had two back to back that cover a big swath of the United States. Um, but this is your last chance for a while unless you want to leave the country. So about every two to three years, somewhere on Earth, we'll have a pretty good total solar eclipse. 
Um, but that's kind of on average, like the next one after this is 2026, and that's going to cover part of Europe and a little bit of Greenland, and that's it. So unless you travel to it, you're not going to see it. Uh, and then after that, we've got some in 2027 and 2028 that'll hit Northern Africa and Australia. Uh, if you go forward from that, so, you know, it's great. Okay, sure. Maybe I'll travel for those things, but, you know, maybe I'm in the U.S. When's the next one we've got in the U.S.? Well, in 2033, if you're in part of Alaska, you get to catch one. Okay. And then after that, in 2024, if you're in parts of Canada, and I think it's maybe like North Dakota, it's one of the like central plain states up near yep. the border, they're going to catch a little bit of it. But that's it. But just a tiny, tiny bit of it. The next big one for us will be 2045. And in 2045, there'll be one that will span most of the southern U.S. So it'll come in, uh, it'll, it'll span from uh, over like the desert southwest over towards florida okay so there'll be one that goes through there but even then that doesn't help us in michigan right so no. what when, yeah. when do we get one in michigan uh well in 2052 some of the southern atlantic states again get it 2106 i think that one comes far enough north that we might get it but I don't know about you, but I don't know that I'm going to be here in 2106, because uh, as I discussed earlier, our human lifetimes are a little bit <laughs> short. So as far as opportunities for anyone who might you know, be tuning in right now, uh, this is it. This is your big opportunity. Next time for the U.S. is really in the 2040s. Who knows where we'll be or what we'll be doing in the 2040s, right? Like if you had asked me, if you'd asked me in 2017, hey, where are you going to be in 2024? What will the world be like in 2024? There's a bunch of stuff I would not have predicted that occurred uh, between then and now. Um, so, you know, carpe diem, uh, you know, seize, seize the day, seize the moment. Get there if you can is my yeah. best advice. Before I let yeah. you go, oh, I please, do want to yeah. say one other thing. Yes. Um, you you were saying that everyone you've talked to has this this same kind of awe and you know like hopeful thing that happens. Um, if you read any interviews with astronauts, um, virtually every astronaut who went to space and looked back at the Earth, they had this like mental change that occurred where they realized that we're not really separate. Like we are all one. We are all essentially we are all one nation. We are all one people on this tiny marble careening through space, this spaceship Earth. And in particular, uh, the Apollo astronauts, the humans who have actually walked on the moon, to be able to look back and see the Earth as this tiny thing in space, that it changed them and it changed their whole outlook on life. And uh, there's a special name for it, and I forget what it's called, but nearly every one of them, they're like, if I could take every politician on Earth and I could bring them up and I could show them this, it would change everything because they would finally realize that the borders that we have, the conflicts that we have, that's all garbage. That's all nonsense. Like we're in this together and we're all on this fragile, fragile world and we need to work together. Um, so yeah, there's this kind of weird like overview effect that you you get when you see it that way. What a poetic man. Like that was a... That 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 professor CMU. What oh, a, what a oh my gosh! What a poetic I, uh, way to describe that. I could have like we had I had a forty five minute uh, discussion with him in which he held on to a, a meteorite. He had a meteorite, four billion year old meteorite that we talked did, about. Why not? Of course he did. He's a he's a, he, a, a physics uh, background, and if you have a physics background, your brain extends in multiple ways with incredible depth. I could have talked with him forever. He was such a good professor, making things uh, interesting. We're coming to the end of our time here. We've got just a couple of minutes left. I yep. wanted to give you an opportunity to explain everything that you did leading up to this. You read books, you listened to podcasts, you read articles, you, you researched things. Yeah. For well, all of it to culminate, how are you feeling now? It, life is about expectations, and my expectations for this were high. Yeah. They were met, if not exceeded. They were fantastic, especially considering the fact that we had all these high clouds. This is a thick deck of clouds, and yeah, it still did not diminish it. Perhaps it did some, but I wouldn't know. I don't have that counterfactual in front of me. I don't have that world. But that, it was it was incredible. Um, I'm happy that we did it. Then you have to start thinking ahead. Yeah. Shall we do this again? Could Could we should we do this again? again? We should do this again. Would logistics allow it? There's one in Alaska. So Luxor, Egypt, perhaps. Luxor, Egypt. For six minutes and 30 seconds. I, I would, I would, 
like it, that very much. For me, for me, it is an application of everything that one learns. When you research it, you do everything. I, you, you learn all these things. I mean, I've got a whole, I got a whole notepad here of facts, and, and some I didn't even get to about the length of time it's going to be, about how it's going to feel, what it's going to look like, this and that. But then when you're in the moment and you just get to have that that experience, it is more than I thought it was going to be. Yeah. Which I am happy about. Which yeah. I'm happy about. It moves you in a way that, it feels like a crutch at this point to say. It moves you in a way that you don't know how to explain. Yeah. But things become cliche because they're true. Yeah. And all these people that have devoted their lives to it, it gives you another uh, amount of appreciation for them. Like, like Dr. Kate Russo, the one who famously said, you experience totality above you, around you, and within you. And now you get why that statement is so famous amongst eclipse chasing circles that they have it printed on hats and shirts and bumper stickers because it is so true. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Happy to be here. Happy to be Happy here. Happy to be here. Well, this is going to wrap up our coverage of the Great American 2024 yep. total solar eclipse from the Path of Totality at the Imagination Station in Toledo. Weather Boys Edition. Weather Boys Edition. Weather Boys Edition. <laughs> I was waiting for, yes. So we're not done yet. You're not gonna. You're gonna see more of us throughout the day. We're gonna be on the live stream at four o'clock. So if you're watching the live stream and you're like, "All right, I'll turn it off now because those jokers are done," don't go anywhere because we're not actually done. No. Nope. They're gonna give us 15 minutes to go use the bathroom, perhaps, and then we're coming right back on. Uh, we're talking to uh, Jamie, who's gonna be doing the uh, the show at four o'clock, and then we're out at five and six. It takes you 15 minutes to go to the bathroom? You don't know. I don't. Don't want to know. pin me down to something. All right. Gonna go look up more Don't Snapple facts. Don't spoil the eclipse coverage with potty humor at the end. That's All not right? humor. That was in a, that was a thing you said. All right. You good? I'm good. I'm good. I'm great. Too. All right. That'll do it for us. Reporting live from Toledo, the Weather Boys. Fox News. Happy Monday and happy Solar Eclipse Day, Detroit. It is April 8th. I'm your host, Jamie Sherrod, and you're watching Live Now Detroit. Live from the Fox 2 Newsroom.
This is Fox 2 Detroit. Well, hopefully you got a chance to check out the incredible solar eclipse and hopefully you got a good view. But if not, here's a recap of the rare phenomenon.
right. That was very cool to see. Lots of excitement. Uh, two of the people probably most excited are Derek Kevra and Alan Longstreet. We'll check in with them in just a few. But really quickly, let's get into our news of the day here. History will be made tomorrow when James and Jennifer Crumbly become the first parents ever in the U.S. to be sentenced for their child's role in a school shooting. The Crumblies both were convicted of involuntary manslaughter. Prosecutors are pushing for a prison term of up to 15 years. James's attorney want time served. Jennifer's fighting for house arrest. Fox 2's Charlie Langton getting predictions from some of Metro Detroit's well-known legal experts on the matter. 10 to 15. For both? For both. The top of the sentence guidelines. Seven and a half yeah, or so. Yeah, that's what I think. I'm predicting 10 to 15 for Mr. Crumley, top <laughs> of the guidelines from, from his car. <laughs> okay, we're all over the place. There you have it. Now, sentencing for both Crumleys will take place at separate times tomorrow. We'll be live streaming the entire day on our website. That's foxdetroit.com and our local app. Be sure to tune in. All righty. Well, as we mentioned earlier, such an exciting day as far as the solar eclipse is concerned. We do have our Alan Longstreet and Derek Kevra in Toledo, and uh, we're going to check in with them and kind of see just how things have been there being in the path of totality to actually check out the solar eclipse there. It was it was humiliating. It was uh, demeaning. Kelly Mays describing the sexual harassment she says she experienced while working as a police officer for the Detroit Public Schools Public Safety Department in June of 2021. First incident, he said, um, he asked me, was I putting it on him? He saw flowers at my desk and I told him uh, the flowers were for me. And he said, um, hey, Kelly was putting, on, putting it on these guys. Um, that was the first incident. The second incident, he, um, he asked me, was I putting it on this other guy? Um, he asked that right in front of the chief. The third incident, he asked me, what did I have down there, gold? Mays says those comments came from the man who was deputy police chief at the time. The veteran police officer is now suing the school district for a million dollars, alleging sexual harassment and wrongful discharge. She says she complained to the police chief about the alleged harassment after it occurred and was told it would be taken care of. Then I reached out to the OIG, that's the um, Office of Inspector General. Um, they conduct investigations. I let them know what was going on. Nothing was done. Um, I contacted employee relations, labor relations, my union. Nothing was done. Kelly then suffered a series of cascading negative consequences. Demotion. She was assigned from the day shift to the afternoon shift. Um, she was denied um, the opportunity to become a lieutenant. Um, deputy chief and then ultimately she was terminated from her job last month. What's notable about the termination is that um, the very people that Kelly had complained to about the sexual harassment and who did nothing about it were the ones who fired her based on false charges. And in addition to wanting her old job back. Um, I like them to address um, accountability. People need to be held accountable for their actions and let them know that this is not it's not tolerated and it won't it won't be tolerated. You'll face you'll face some kind of consequences for those actions. Now we reached out to the school district for comment, but so far we have not heard from anyone. Camille Amiri, Fox 2 News. The Detroit Public Schools Community District facing a massive lawsuit filed by that former officer uh, who claimed the uh, firing offenses there. Well, some scary moments for people at the Motor City Furry Convention as a bomb threat forces the evacuation of an Ypsilanti hotel. The person who sent the threat claimed there were explosives in a number of rooms, cars and on the roof. Investigators swept the grounds and the threat was later determined to be a false alarm. The convention is a time for those who appreciate the anthropomorphic lifestyle to come together and celebrate. A bomb threat also forced the evacuation of the same convention last year. Well, a young boy in Warren being hailed a hero after saving his family of eight from a fire. It happened early Friday morning at an apartment complex on Ford Avenue. We're told the boy, who was just five years old, woke up his mom just in time to get her and all seven of her children out of the burning apartment. They also helped get a neighbor who shares a wall with them out safely as well. No one was hurt, but the family lost all of their possessions, and now they have to start over. 
I was just trying to get out the house. I was trying to find half my stuff. I couldn't find it because it was in the room, so I just had to run out with what I had. It's amazing how he got everybody out the house. Everything was engulfed in flames. And this whole house, I don't even see how they got out. It was a miracle. Well, two GoFundMe pages have been set up to help the family and their neighbor. We do have links on our website at fox2detroit.com. A new facility to help women experiencing homelessness opening on Detroit's east side. The Jackson Transitional Housing Center is a licensed community comprehensive wellness center set up to help all kinds of women. It has 25 beds and provides temporary emergency housing for women in a safe and clean environment. I am just so, 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 so excited. This is my passion. I've been waiting for this and I am excited. This is a nice place. This is not a shelter. This is not a center. This is a house. They are not homeless. They are residents of JTHC. Well, residents also have access to 24-hour advocacy support and resources. The long-term goals include providing women with increased income, permanent housing, and the skills needed to succeed. All righty. Well, we told you we were going to check in with Derek and Alan. Uh, we finally have them here in Toledo. Uh, they were in the path of totality for the solar eclipse. And uh, we are going to check in with them and see how everything is going there right now. Derek and Alex, can, can you hear us? Me? Yeah. Hello. Yes. Yeah, yes. I can hear you. We good? We good? Hello. Yeah, yeah so we got you. You got us. Day. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. You guys have been very <laughs> busy, but you've also Jamie. been having a lot of fun out there, huh? Jamie. It's been an emotional roller coaster through the day today because you start the day with expectations and then and they're building. But then you're like, they'll never cat it'll never cash in. Like it, you can you can't have all of that. But then then the event starts and you're like, well maybe it maybe will. it does. It might. It and might. then the event well, happens and it does. It does. It exceeded. Yeah, and then now we're like here afterward where you're just you there's no letdown it's just excitement no right there's now. no let no it's just excitement we and were trebuchet to the top yeah and we now get to glide to the bottom we should introduce our guest let's do that yeah let's okay. introduce our well, guest please. yeah well let's do that in just a second oh okay yeah so because sit there and just yes, you're there doing for a minute. keep it up you're doing great you're doing fantastic <laughs> fantastic and now we will because yeah. now we're ready to do that oh <laughs> what okay that's well, fine i wanted so uh, let's introduce, introduce Andrea, who is Hello. a, uh, she's a teacher. Because now they yes. can turn the camera, Derek. Oh, that was the thing. Oh, <laughs> yes. that was the thing. Okay. This, Andrea, this teacher, fourth grade. Fourth grade. Yes. Fourth grade. Fourth you grade. have been teaching your kids about this. You came here to see it with your family. Yes. What was it like for you? It was amazing. I, I can't describe it. That's right. Do you That's see what right. that was? Yes, That's the right. gap in the, the brain she stops so working. Yeah, it's so, I, for all of us, yes. it's so true because you, you, you think you go into it thinking it's going to look like this, it's going to be like this, it's going to feel like this, and then you go through it and maybe it hits all those, maybe it exceeds all of those, but it's hard to say it. It is, it's hard to express it. I can't it. describe it. Yeah. Who, who'd you come here with? I came here with my family, my husband and my two children. How old are they? Uh, my son is 10 and my daughter just turned two. And the husband as well? <laughs> oh, we're not, we're not, we're not interested in his age. We don't care about no. his age. Okay. But no. what, what did they think? What, they, how, what they, were their thoughts? They were very excited. Yeah. The two-year-old, she didn't care, but. <laughs> yeah, of course, sure. But the 10-year-old yeah. must have had some He was some very excited. Feelings. He yeah. was very excited, yes. So your job now as a teacher is to try to convey this to your students tomorrow. Yes, without pictures. And I'll just tell them, pictures wouldn't do it justice. Yeah, I'm so glad you said that because yes. that was one of the messages that we were pushing out beforehand is put the phones away. Yes. Don't try to take a picture of it with your iPhone. It wouldn't Na work. Yeah, NASA has cameras that are worth <laughs> billions yes. of dollars. They're going to take a picture of it. You can show, you can look at that picture. Just enjoy the moment. And that sounds like that's what you guys did. Yes. Yep. Great. All right. Where are you guys from again? Monroe, Michigan. Monroe. Monroe. Monroe yes. Yeah. So she needs a Monroe microphone. Michigan. So when she talks, yeah, I, okay. she needs a I microphone. I thought it was like a redirect. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So Monroe. All right. So wait. How, getting back. You heard traffic's rough, right? Have you Pardon? heard this? Have you heard traffic is rough getting back? We took the back roads. And yeah, they're, they're I, still rough. Yeah. Andrea, they're still rough. It's all good. I heard. We've got I, time. I, I heard, don't rain on her parade. Oh yeah. Why are right. you doing that? Yeah. Don't worry about it. You'll be <laughs> what fine. What is wrong with it? Get, get there when you get the there. Yes. We're 
we're a bit giddy. We're a bit giddy because uh, everything yeah. kind of kind of cashed in for us. I will say your children are waiting in the wings over there, and they're very well behaved. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I have very. Do you have any parenting tips you can give Alan real quick? Please. No. No. I don't. Yeah. T teaching tips, perhaps anything? No. Just no. All right. Very good. <laughs> all right. Well, we all experienced it together, which was great. We're glad that you were here Thank at this you. moment, and, Thank and you. we're surrounded. So things are thinning out a little bit here at the Imagination Station in Toledo, but at its peak, there was they were expecting close to five thousand people. There I are counted less now, 4, but there's hundred ninety-two. That's what. That's what I counted. Did you not? Do you have a tally? I'd like to see your data. It's all up here. Big brain. Big brain. Big brain. Allen's what they call me. Very good. All right. Uh, Jamie, that's all we got for you right now, but we hear later you're going to talk to Chief Scientist Carl from the Imagination yeah. Station, and, and he's excited to, to talk to you about yeah, well, all of that, uh, everything that he experienced during the can, Jamie, can you do me a favor before we go? When you talk to Carl, can you ask Carl how he felt when he saw Derek try to use the pinhole projector? <laughs> and you don't need to know anything else. Just ask him that question. Okay, how he felt when and Derek if you guys tried can, to use yeah. the pinhole projector. Yeah. Okay. I will be Jamie, sure to ask Jamie, him have, we, have, 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 have you Please. ever have you ever picked up a tool and thought, oh, this is for this, and then you attempted to do it, but you did it incorrectly? Oh, like a chainsaw is not to cut your fingernails. Did yeah, anyone it, right, like that. Or like did go to the gym. It? It's a, yeah. It was. I will it text was for, you the time so that you guys can get the B-roll yes. of Please. that. Yeah, it was an you. embarrassing <laughs> moment, but we've moved on. At least I thought we'd moved on. Maybe we didn't. No. All we're, right. We're gonna linger. It's fine. Oh dear. We appreciate but it's up for now, the though, I think. always. <laughs> Thank All right, you. Thanks, guys. Well, we will check back in with the Imagination Station in Toledo a little later. But uh, for now, there are lots of events taking place in the city leading up to the draft. That's including Event 24. Organizer and brand manager Rufus Bartell and former NFL defensive end and member of the Event 24 host committee, Ronald Talley, joined us this morning to give us an inside scoop. Check it out. Oh, doesn't it get you pumped? The clock is winding down to the NFL draft in the D. The stage will be set for the big weekend and now just a little more than two weeks away. So time to get ready. There are so many events that are taking place in the city leading up to the draft, including Event 24. That's what we're here to talk about. Event yes. organizer and brand manager Rufus Bartel and former NFL defensive end and member of Event 24's host committee, Ronald Talley, in the studio. Y'all got up early for us this morning. Thank you. Yeah, quite early. Wake up, wake up. I needed some coffee or some <laughs> muffins or something. <laughs> okay, so tell us about this event, because there will be a lot for people and families to do when they head downtown, but this is something that uh, also is doing great for the community as yeah. well. You know, Event 24 is a really cool event because it, ha it offers a lot for a wide variety of people. We have a really great uh, comedy show coming up with some of the Detroit's top comedians. Uh, we have a fashion show, uh, guest a celebrity model, uh, Mimi Foss from uh, Love and Hip Hop is going to be hitting the runway. Uh, Monet Alfaro Bartel, which is obviously Mel Farr's daughter, is going to be offering up a 24-piece collection um, themed after her father, obviously, because her father wore number 24 and he played for the Lions. It's April 24th and it's year 24, so 24, 24, 24. These synchronicities, you That's can't right. make it up. The stars, the moon and the stars lined up. Literally. <laughs> Literally. Uh, let's uh, talk a little bit about just what this event will be like, especially being a former player yourself and knowing how important Mel Farr was to the community as well. Plus, I'm sure you've enjoyed a lot of uh, parties, so you know what the people right. like to enjoy when they head right. out. So, so this is going to be very upscale. Mm -hmm. It's going to be uh, a lot of fun. One thing about the NFL is that we say, hey, it's a privilege to be here. Yeah. So it stands for not for long, really. <laughs> so there's always a transition in. So we have Detroit Pal. Uh, and their administrators coming in. We have, uh, of course, the last transition going out. So you have your group of college guys from Lawrence Tech, the defensive line will be there, which will be our future uh, entrepreneurs, sponsors for this event. This is the first annual. And then you have your NFL guys. We have about at least 25 former NFL players who are now entrepreneurs and um, um, contributors to the community. 
And it really highlights how important that is because, yes. you know, especially kids now, they, you know, if they want to play a sport, they're locked in. But you do have to have a plan. You do have to know what you're going to do after. Mel Farr obviously uh, famously became very successful in the auto industry, many yeah. car dealerships, and many other things as well. So it'll be nice for folks to just kind of mingle and, you know, have those conversations with the kids who are, yes. who are so excited to meet you guys. Yeah. Yes. But the, the main driver of the event is to want to introduce Mel Farr to a whole new generation yeah and then also to remind people who we had in our backyard iconic figure one of the first African Americans to transition successfully from pro, uh, pro sports to athletics you know right now you know some of the salaries in athletics are really staggering yeah. so oftentimes people don't understand that after you get done playing what are you gonna do so Mel Farr always talked about these tools these yeah. business tools and so our short game is to certainly get a street name after him our, our long game is uh, uh, add some coursework uh, into one of the colleges universally locally so you can wow. really begin to talk about you know your transition from pers professional sports and then people who don't want to play uh, professional sports is want to know more about the business world and as we know uh, Mel Farr was a giant and he was an icon yeah and this is gonna be a really really cool event we got a lot of great hosts yeah. that's gonna uh, host this event co-host this event with us that we'll be making more announcements later but uh, it's something for everybody the food is Excellent. great and if you haven't been to one mic it is a beautiful place can we get ticket information quickly event noir uh, event uh, noir.com all of the tickets will be there um, everything you'll be able to see what everything comes with mm -hmm. fashion comedy networking uh, a nice gala so bring your best all That's right, right there for you uh, also on event noir.com uh, search Mel Farr and the information will come up uh, as well. That was Event Noir. Event Noir. Oh, see, yeah, you're event right. Noir. See, let me borrow your glasses then because I think <laughs> I, I might need a little something. All right. All that and much more. We'll put that on the web as well. FoxyDetroit.com. Oh, speaking of sports, Oakland University's men's basketball team may have been knocked out of the NCAA tournament, but fans can still celebrate the team's historic run with a new bobblehead of coach Greg Campy. They're available now for $30 along with Grizz bobbleheads, which are $35. The Grizzlies were a tournament darling during March Madness after a stunning win over Kentucky that killed a lot of people's brackets, followed by a near upset over North Carolina State. The bobbleheads are expected to ship later this year in September. Well, the solar eclipse isn't the only big thing that's happening today. Metro Detroit's biggest and best used book sale is back. Book stock going on now through Sunday at Laurel Park Place in Livonia. Buyers can choose from more than 300,000 used books, DVDs, CDs, and much more. Now, sale hours are 11 a.m. until 7 p.m. today through Saturday and 11 to 6 on Sunday. Admission is free. Well, clearly the solar eclipse is a big deal, but what makes it all so special? We'll break it down just ahead. You're watching Live Now Detroit. We'll be right back.
welcome back to Live Now Detroit at 4. Time now is 420. A beautiful view over Detroit. It is 65 degrees out there right now, you guys. So get out and enjoy it if you can. Well, what makes this eclipse so special? And why did so many people dedicate so much of their time and money to travel into the path of totality? Well, Alan Longstreet needed to get that question answered, and he did. Check this out. I really want everybody to feel the joy, awe, beauty, amazement. The, for me, I feel the universe in my soul, and I want everybody to feel that. And one of my frustrations right now is everybody's talking, safety, 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 totally, I want you to be safe, but, and then traffic, traffic, traffic. It's like, no, it's beauty, it's awe, it's amazement, it's wonder, it's the universe in your soul. It's above you, around you, in you. It's an amazing experience. And that is why people are coming from all over the world to see it. That is why people who saw it in 2017 are not missing this one. It is, it is, I remember 2017. I saw the partial. Okay. And I, and I saw the partial. And then I remember seeing a, a television segment um, with a, um, a meteorologist who saw the total. And I remember watching him cry. And let's just, I felt so confused about why he was crying. <laughs> and then, and then I started listening to your podcast. And like, I don't understand it because I've never seen one. But you gave me such such a window into what that world is. What does that mean to you? It, it's I when I, when you are in the path, it, you're you're aligned with the sun, the moon, the earth, and you. You are aligned to be there in the path. And so, I one point of me is, I feel like the luckiest person, the most grateful person in the universe. The other piece of me, it's such great humility because you realize just how big the universe is for us to even exist here in this moment in space and time. And it's not just knowing it in your head, you know, orbital dynamics, the sun, the earth revolves around the sun, the move around, it's not knowing it in your head, it's feeling it in your soul. Because you see the moon cross over and it's just, it's orbital dynamics, but it's, it's happening in front of you. And then to see the giant, the corona coming out from behind the moon because the sun's covered up. We can't ever see the corona because the sun's so blinding. But when the moon covers it up, we see the corona and it's so beautiful. And then you see the prominences coming out from behind the moon that are multiple Earths of diameter shooting out from behind the moon. That, that concept, just how big that is. And because that exists, we exist. It's just a, but it get again. It's not in my head. It's in my heart. It gets in my soul, and it's I've, I've now I've done it twenty times, and it hasn't gotten old. And I don't think it ever will be. That's insane. Twenty it times insane. because because they, they don't. I mean, they happen often, right? What every one and a half, every years eleven about. to eighteen months on average, somewhere on the planet. You've done some traveling. To I've get done to a those lot of traveling. Places. Seven continents, six oceans so far. That's wild. That's so cool. When you like take us back, take us back to pre-total eclipse, Letitia. Did you did you ex what were you expecting? Because who you are now is not who you were then. Well, who I was, well, I tell you what, I'll tell you when I got inspired to even see my first one. Do you know the remember the song You're So Vain? You're so vain. I oh, bet yeah. you think this song is about you. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Yes. That song came out when I was like 12 or 13 years old. And it had this line in it. Then you flew your Learjet to Nova Scotia to see a total eclipse of the sun. So I was like, wow, rich people who own Learjets, take them to go see total solar eclipses. That's got to be cool. So I went and looked it up in the library, and it was cool. It was math and science and the orbits. And there was going to be some, you know, around me and I just wanted to see one sometime in my lifetime so back to when I was 30 1991 the eclipse came to Mexico and this was back on, I'm gonna date myself here this was back when you go to Mexico with your driver's license you didn't even need a passport oh they let they let us do that huh all right, yeah, all right. that's how many that's 1991 anyway so I went down there to see it and it was actually the longest solar eclipse of the century back then and 
I lost my breath. I forgot to breathe for like the first 30 seconds of the eclipse. It was so beautiful and stunning. I felt like this small little pit of primitive fear in my stomach when that moon first covered, totally covered the sun and the sun went out. It is just like, it's like a black hole with the corona around it. So I felt a little bit of primitive fear, but then I was just so stunned by the beauty and the amazement and just the, the whole realization of just how much of the universe is out there that exists just for us to be here in this moment. All right, Rich Luderman joins us now. And Rich, we both got a chance to step outside and take a look at the solar eclipse with those special glasses, though. We had our I'm, glasses. I'm exhausted. I, mean, I'm all, <laughs> I'm, I got all filled up, you know, mm -hmm. with, with, with eclipse stuff. And uh, it was something. It was yeah. really quite now. Obviously, during the news, we're going to be showing lots of, you know, video from Texas all mm -hmm. the way to Maine because we were just one spot that got to see it yeah. today. Uh, now, I have an interesting vantage point. So if we punch up our visa, visible satellite loop, you're going to see the eclipse from space. Now, just watch that black blob move from Texas right there all the way into New England. So that is the shadow of the moon uh, transiting the eastern United States. So it's really quite remarkable that, you know, we can see it in many ways. But the other great thing that happened was that Mother Nature cooperated. You know, we did have some clouds this morning. Uh, had it been a cloudy, rainy day, then we would have been watching it from some other place, you know. But, but it worked out, so Mother Nature really came through today. So let's take a look at uh, the weather. Wait a minute, i got to forward my... Uh-oh. Oh, there it is. Live pictures uh, along the Detroit River. Beautiful afternoon. I mean, it was a little cooler this morning, but it turned out to be a wonderful day. Uh, you can see right now current numbers. Howell at 72 degrees. A lot of us are in the upper 60s. Uh, there's 70 in Lansing. A bit cooler near the water. Mount Clemens, 61. There's Adrian down there. Uh, Lenaway County, 70 degrees. A nice light breeze from the south and west as that warm front lifted north. Even warmer numbers south of us. Fort Wayne, 70. Cincinnati, 74. Pittsburgh, 71 degrees. Now, you have to go way up to the north and west to find the cooler air. There's Thunder Bay at 39. Uh, Minneapolis, they were stuck in the clouds today, 47. So watch our next weather system. It moves north of the Great Lakes, so it doesn't really come this way. But there'll be enough instability in the atmosphere tomorrow afternoon to perhaps give us a shower. So Tuesday afternoon, a shower chance, but most of Tuesday and Wednesday are going to be dry days. A uh, much better chance for wet weather for us down the road for Thursday and Friday. You'll see that in the seventh day. For the rest of tonight... We'll just call it pleasant. A few clouds will get down to 48. Tomorrow, mostly cloudy. It'll be breezy and mild. Afternoon shower chance back up to 70 degrees. And then check out the seven-day forecast. Clearly, Thursday and Friday are going to be damp days for us. There'll be some wind around, numbers back into the 50s. But the weekend ahead looks nice as well. 62 Saturday, 67 Sunday. So, Jamie, what a day. Uh, you know, I... I told people, you know, uh, this morning that it's not really like a Cedar Point ride, mm -hmm. you know, this eclipse. It's not a roller coaster. It's yeah. just this thing that happens. But if you think about all that's going on, it's really quite extraordinary. And I know a lot of people in southeast Michigan, down into Ohio, you know, got to enjoy it today because the weather cooperated. Yeah, and we were concerned about that, but we remain optimistic. We crossed our fingers and Mother Nature came through with that good weather. Uh, big time. Uh, we're not going to see another eclipse like that around here for 20 more years. Yeah. So today was the day. Obviously, on Fox 2 News at 5 and 6, tonight at 10 and 11, we're going to show, you know, all this great views of the eclipse, you know, from NASA and from uh, Fox Weather. They were spread out all across the country, down in Indianapolis, up in Burlington, Vermont. But we saw it pretty good here yeah. today in South East Michigan. Thankfully, Mission, so. we didn't think we would, there but it go. worked Thumbs out. Up. Thumbs up. <laughs> all right. Thanks, Rich. Okay, Jake. Well, today's solar eclipse was a once-in-a-lifetime experience for some people. It had people from all over the country traveling to get into its path of totality, Fox's Chanley Painter caught up with one woman who's no stranger to this kind of celestial event and shared her excitement for the show. As many Americans wait in anticipation to try to get a glimpse of Monday's solar eclipse, it's almost certain Letitia Ferrer will be among those staring up at the sky with special safety glasses, of course. 
My life is measured in eclipses. That's because Ferrer is a self-described eclipse chaser. The 63-year-old from Texas has seen 20 total solar eclipses so far. I'm sort of addicted to them. I'm addicted to that feeling of that being that for those few seconds or minutes, being one with the universe and being really present and feeling it. Ferrer's passion has brought her to all seven continents. My first one in North America was the 1991. My second one in North America was the 2017, and this will be my third. But I've been to Europe for one of them. I've now gone to Africa twice. I've gone to Australia three times. I've gone to Antarctica twice. And now it's bringing her to schools where she gets kids excited about the natural phenomenon, which takes place when the moon passes between the Earth and the sun, blocking out the sun's rays and casting its shadow on the Earth. The motto is no child left inside. I'm giving talks because that's my goal is to get more people interested in it so they don't miss this wonderful opportunity. I think it's going to be scary because it's going to be very dark at like daytime and I've never seen an eclipse. With help from her vision board, Ferrer keeps focused on her goal of making it to age 103, which is when she will hopefully get to see her 50th total solar eclipse. I'm Chanley Painter, Fox News. Well, the best place to be for today's solar eclipse was in the path of totality. We're checking in with Imagination Station in Toledo again to hear about their front row experience to this spectacular sight. That's coming up after the break. Welcome back to Live Now Detroit at 4. Southeast Michigan getting a decent view of the total solar eclipse, but for an even better view of the rare phenomenon, many traveled to Toledo, the Imagination Station there hosting the ultimate celestial event. Joining us now is Chief Scientist Carl Nelson. And Carl, it has been a very busy day for you. It has. Uh, we started at 6 o'clock this morning getting things set up, all leading up to that 312 totality that we experienced. And Alan told me to make sure I asked you this question, so I'm going to do that now before I forget. He said, how did you feel when Derek tried to use the pinhole projector? Apparently he was using that incorrectly. <laughs> <laughs> 
He did. Uh, they they had it sort of reversed, but it's a, it, literally it is a common mistake because you see the lens that's on it and you think, oh, I need to look through the lens, but actually it's just completely the other way. We use the lens to sharpen the image of the sun, but. Uh, we, you know, it's fine. Everybody everybody has a little confusion at first. Right. Apparently, Derek definitely had some. Um, as a scientist, how many solar eclipses have you been able to witness? I've seen partial solar eclipses. I've seen the annual solar eclipses. And I've seen one uh, total solar eclipse today. Awesome. And about how long did the eclipse last there? And can you tell me a little bit about, you know, what was it like being in the path of totality? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. It was about a two minute eclipse, one minute, 54 seconds. And you know, you know, you read about this stuff ahead of time and you prepare to answer questions that other people have. And, you know, in the moment, it was, it was incredible. Um, it, it was, I, I lost for words, actually, because the lighting slowly dimmed, but then just before totality, it dropped like a rock. And the lighting was just weird. It, it, it was like a steely gray color. It just didn't look right. Um, and then during totality, the, the thing that got me the most, like emotionally, was the sound of the crowd. Man, like everybody was like, it was coming and it was just like, ah, you know, just like this communal battle cry of sorts. And then during totality, you know, I, it was, it's just, it was, I don't know. I don't really have a lot of words for it because I was trying to like, not like, get emotional and cry because I, I didn't want to obscure my vision. I wanted to be able to keep watching it. And we could see prominences coming off from the south and the nine o'clock hour on the sun's surface. Um, and then and then it was it was done. And it went by so incredibly fast, um, faster than two minutes would seem. And then afterwards, I'm thinking, dang, I forgot to notice the temperature drop. I forgot to look for all these other things. And, you know, I was just so caught up in the moment that all I could really do was stare at the sun. Um, it, I, now I know why people say this is, it's a once in a lifetime experience for most people, mostly because where it falls on the earth, you know, here in Toledo, the last time we had one was 1806. The next time, 2099, Detroit won't have a total solar eclipse until 2444. So we nailed it, we, we saw it, it was amazing. A little bit of high cloud cover, but we saw right through it, and it was just an unspeakable moment. I loved it. Yeah, it's amazing um, to hear how people attempt to describe the moment. Derek and Alan had an interview earlier in the show with a school teacher who was there at the Imagination Station, and you know they asked her to kind of explain it. And just like you, she was at a loss for words because it's that spectacular. It's a bit difficult to explain to others, right? Yeah, I think so. And, and you know, for me, I think one thing that I would take forward is we talked a lot about totality when we talked to people about the eclipse coming here. I would expand that to include that time period where the, the, the light is changing and it's getting darker and it's a weird dark. That, that on both sides combined with totality, that was the eclipse. It wasn't just getting dark and seeing the corona. It was the bookends on both sides. That made it a whole package for me. Yeah, and the solar eclipse is over, but it looks and sounds like the party is still going there behind you at the museum. <laughs> it is. We're, we stayed open late today thinking, you know, there might be traffic for people leaving. So we've got a whole bunch of activity stations. We've got food trucks. We have beer, coffee, uh, candy, ice cream, anything you can think of. It's, it is like a big party. We probably had over 5,000 people here today wow. um, between, you know, now or six in the morning and um, right now. So I think it was for us, it was an amazingly successful event. And, and the, the cherry on top was that we got people excited about science. We got them to experience a once in a lifetime experience and do it as a group. And I think that group sense of awe just makes it so much better. Oh, that's so incredible to hear, Carl. We appreciate you for speaking with us today. Thank you. Sure. Thanks for having us. All right, well, rideshare drivers seeing a rise in accidents will tell you the cause when we come back.